The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay, the Red Santee, and just want to let you know that, yes, Olski and I have finally caved in. We've got us up a Patreon. Yes, Turnbuckle Tabloid has a Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. We've done it. We said, fuck it. If you guys want to be a part of the show a little bit deeper, more in, more in depth, in, in intense, uh, get more involved in the behind the scenes and be a part of the show in a more intimate and sensuous ways, why not pay for it? Go to Turnbuckle Tabloids Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. You guys can be a part of it. Check out the tiers. Things that might be able to fit your needs when it comes to us here at Turnbuckle Tabloid. So guys, please help us out here. It helps us to build the product, better audio, better apps, better programs, and of course, helps us to build us to be a better podcast, although we're awesome as is but still regardless your 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 contribution your contributions your shillings your 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 bits of change could help us to grow here at turnbuckle tabloid so once again patreon.com forward slash turnbuckle tabloid be a part of the extravaganza and the ridiculous and buffoonery that is turnbuckle tabloid join us on social media and as well as all the podcasting outlets and as always enjoy the show What's going on, guys? This is Leo Rush, the new House of Glory Crown Jewel champion, and you're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. Turnbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. Oh, Leo Rush, how I miss those days when you were the House of Glory Crown Jewel Champion. Jesus, as a matter of fact, I miss the days of House of Glory. Shit, what the fuck? Why are they making a bounce back? Shit. Probably next year. Uh, that's that's the hope. I, I mean, mean, I get that they're being safe, uh, you know, and I guess that they have, they're doing a whole rebuild over there with uh, Master P taking over and the whole nine, so I expected a year off. To be honest, they needed it. You and think you, so? And you even predicted it. You said last yeah, year. Yeah, I you did, were, but I didn't think it was actually going to come to fruition. Yeah, like, shit. You, 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 didn't even, you didn't say they needed a month off. You didn't say they needed two months off. You were like, yo, they need a year off. You even pre- said that before they even closed any shit down. There's going to be a Master P reset. Gonna, that's what they're going to do over there? They have to. Mm-hmm. I mean, with the money they got, the people they have, the the roster that they, they're, they're growing... Moving this fucking mic towards my face like a fucking getting ready for like gay porn the way yeah. that it's adjusting in my like, like shit is wrong, weird wrong hole um, yeah, exactly sure nah but I, I depending think, on what fucking category it is sure um nah but I think I think um and the one thing I'll say like I'll give them the pass with the year like I'll give them the rebuild but if you come and tell me none of these wrestlers none of these wrestlers that they that that that's on their quote unquote roster is not is not they're not training right now then there's a problem with me because. If you're not hosting any shows, you better be making your talent get better, though. Well, the only thing that that, that I'm hoping that's going on is, I mean, I've seen it with with certain wrestlers that they're giving him the the carte blanche to go to other promotions. So at least yeah, you know see, you got yeah, to stay sharp. There's a few guys, but like I'm talking about like the Ken Broadways, the uh, the Evander James. I'm not seeing lately. Uh, even even the young guys like Brian Burgundy and the few other like the up and coming young boys like I want to see them like know I want to know that they're training out there I want to know that they're ready for this rebuild they better not just have the, the doors closed and no one's there making magic happen like I want to see like some progression there but well shout out to to Smiley and um we like we had in the intro Leo Rush they were just at VXS Legends Never Die this past weekend it was a great show man great show man I for you guys it. who fucking shitted on them because of their happenstance that occurred to them. In the previous show, or, or the snitch, uh, sure. Yeah, the snitch episode, the snitch, the, yeah, event. The, the snitch, the snitch, the snitch purview. Shout, I mean, shout right. out to them, man! It was a fucking a great show, and I'm not just gonna say that 
it because we are friends with the with the promotion and uh, no, I that's, it was a that's solid family. Show it was from a very to end. yeah, very solid show up and down. I was very happy for uh, all the talent involved. Happy to see a little Leo Rush a part of the uh, the card. I thought each match was solid. Each match had a purpose, and um, I was entertained. But before. Um, NXT, so... I, a lot of guys that we had on the show. Jimmy Lloyd. Calvin uh, Tankman. Tankman. We had uh, Daniel Garcia. We had a few guys that's on the Homicide, show. Homicide, of course. Homicide. Homicide. I got to get him on the show sooner or later because this is his uh, farewell retirement tour, so I got to reach is. out he's, to him. He's, his days are numbered in the in the, in the in the ring, but uh, hopefully uh, he can come over here and do some more work uh, with the uh, behind a mic. Uh, Brian Cage was in the building again. Brian Cage and 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 the person who went viral the most, um, Too Cold Scorpio, uh, with the performance of the night. People said uh, I, actually went viral online. I was um, worried, of course, I because was, of course. first of all, he looked like one of my Spanish uncles that that comes to the family reunion, and he's already carrying two six packs in his hand. Yeah, you right, ready to go. And he was already drunk. He's like, oh yeah. And it's like, oh shit, he's already ready to start some shit. He already, he's, very, he's already fucking lit. He's already a problem. And but, then, nah, but he showed up, son. The I, one who showed up for that was actually Jordan Oliver. I know he was probably he, shaking he's in the his future. Yeah, but he was shaking in his boots. But I, I knew that that was a match that he wanted. That was his dream match. Who would have thought? Yeah, right. Too cold Scorpio. Out of all people, out of right? All, out of all people in this wrestling biz, you choose you choose too cold. But uh, I witnessed uh, a veteran be able to go, and Jordan Oliver, of course, you know he could go. So. Uh, I was impressed throughout the entire night. Great, great new setup. You know, they had a, a stage, didn't have no st- snitches, no bullshit. And uh, I thought it was a strong night. And I think they announced their new show that's uh, happening uh, in November. I think November 11th. November yeah, 11th. I want to I wanna learn how to pronounce it because I have no idea how to fucking pronounce that shit. Um, yeah, I don't know where that's from. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're in I, the same boat with I, me. I, I have I no love, idea what the fuck that is. I would love to get that reference, but I don't. Uh, I will one day. It'll be it's, tomorrow. It's but, way over my fucking yeah, head. Yeah, that shit flew. Uh, I. Uh, <laughs> He was, you know, I, thought, I swear, I thought I was the only one. I was like, nah, oh, and okay. If you, right, if you don't get a reference, I don't get a reference. <laughs> Let's just be honest here. I hate to say it, but if if you don't understand the reference, I'm pretty sure 99% of the time I won't get the fucking reference. And I don't want to be the guy that sits there and goes, what the fuck was that? Like, yeah, no, no, <laughs> I don't want to be that dude. Like, what, 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 I don't get it. I don't I don't know what it means. You know, I like I said, I always support. I just... Uh, don't know what the fuck that means, but uh, well, I guess we'll get information uh, to, to find out more. But in case, in case you guys missed uh, what we usually do early on in these segments, which is the opening song, we're on day a thousand and nineteen of what is this uh, fucking zombie pandemic apocalypse to the nine. Yep, and and, uh, and now that I'm working, I'm just like. You know, uh, it's kind of it's kind of feels back to normal, but uh, how the hell is that? I mean, you you were tired, a, you bro. were a part timer, yeah. Before and then the only time you really did work full time summer was camp. Summer camp, yeah. It's 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 hard. It's hard. It's it, it, I, granted, I could be doing much worse. Granted, uh, I'm leaving the door open because we, before he continues, I just we we changed up the mics again. We went back to our dynamics. Uh, we were using condensers before, but now I changed back to the dyma- di- the dynamic because I didn't like how the audio sounded in last episode. And I and. and and uh, I was listening back, and I didn't really either, to be honest. My 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 mind, Mike, especially. I was looking back. Yeah, yeah. It was just it, like it was like meh. It wasn't like as it wasn't as 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 good as I thought it was going to be. So. Yeah, it, it was like. Uh, I said, you know what? But yeah, but you know what? I also heard was that um, I, I did a lot of research. I was listening to other podcasters and such. Which, by the way, I got to play something uh, in a minute. But uh, once I started hearing about um, how how. These mics are a little bit more better to our environment. Right. I said, "Fuck it, we gotta go back to it." And they work. Remember, we were having problems. Right. With them. They right. Work. We almost gave up on these. These almost went to the pa- to, to the old Yeller. Yeah, but, we almost uh, sent them out to pasture. They almost died, but no, uh, they're back. And I, mean, I, I, I actually miss this mic. But um, so let, everybody know, let, let everybody know how work is. Just rough, man. It's a, it's not even the hours. I don't care about the hours. The hours, it's, it's, it's. If you ask me right now what my position is, I can't tell you. What, what, like, I, like one minute, one minute they're making me run do customer service. Then I'm going to do take care of children. Then I'm going to do other stuff. Then I'm going to do paperwork. Then I'm going to do something else. I am like, like right now they're calling me like the diversity man. Like I like whatever they need, I'm there for. So I'm running around all day, not complaining. I'm getting money, and that's the end of the day. That's what it is. I'm getting fucking money. I mean, uh, I'm not gonna say how much, but I'm making enough that I cannot complain about this job. It's just, it's just long. Um, the kids can be real brutal because think about it. This is their first time remote learning. Right. 
They have no idea what the hell they're doing. They don't know their are usernames. Are you tutoring at the same time? Bro, I'm doing customer service. No, but I'm saying when you're with the kids, are you helping? Yeah. Are you tutoring or you're working? So while they're in school, I'm helping them while being in school. Oh, that's that's good shit. The, shit. The, the, the only the only the only light part is when the teacher teaches. Once the teacher once the teacher goes, okay, guys, do these assignments. They have no fucking clue what they're doing. They oh, have that's no good. idea, and they don't know their usernames. They don't know their passwords because everything's a username and password now, ladies and gentlemen. Myon, Lexia, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Right. Everything's online, and I'm dealing with kindergartners who don't know their ABCs. It's rough. They don't even know what a computer is. I was like, what is that? What did your mom get you? An iPad? I don't know. It has a screen. I'm like, all right. Uh, so, but overall, it's not bad. I just, um, I tire myself out. It's, it's my fault because I work out right after and I really shouldn't be, but I'm just exhausted lately. Uh, the past two weeks have been, even my, even, I'm, I'm even getting shrapnel on my Funko Hub page because I haven't been posting at all. <laughs> like, I haven't shared no one's shit, and, and that's unfortunate, but like, I just don't want to right now. Wow, listen, that's the grind, man, because listen. I just don't want to. And, 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 and for people who, who follow my Funko Hub page and whatever it is, I, I'm just being real with you. I just don't want to right now. I have no, I, I, I even miss Pop of the Day every other day now. I'm not even, I, it's, it's really hard. But the grind, the money's the money's where the money's where it's at, <laughs> and I'm sorry to everyone who who has high hopes for that. But like, I'm taking money first right now, so yeah, I'm sorry. But I'm sorry. No, but you, but you know, that's not mm -hmm. even fair either because, like I said, that, that's no excuse though. Man, you can't even say that use that as an excuse because look, I work overnights. I'm a I'm a fucking 24 hour fucking now. There's no excuse with, with my just... with my situation that I got now. I'm basically a single dad and shit. Yeah, I and I. Like, Oh, there's no, there's no excuse. It's just like it takes a and week. Then it takes I'm a week grinding for, me to get... for I'm grinding for this show and all this. And I'm doing this and that. And I'm fucking jumping on other fucking people's podcasts. Which, by the way, shout out to to uh, well, they, they fucking like me. Uh, quite frankly, with a uh, Howard Stern podcast wow. with Bail. Fillmore and um and and Sam. That's a basically I, I I spoke about this about a couple of weeks ago. It's a podcast that's basically centered on uh, they hate for Howard Stern. I mean, I don't, I don't blame them. He's a, but isn't he? Uh, the only thing I don't like. He, I mean, the, uh, he's not a Trump supporter, right? Uh, no, 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 no. But oh, the um, I'll take that. So win in my it's book. more about what he went from to what he is now, and how much of a fucking uh, bullshit artist a he became. Sellout? Yeah, and he not, not only a sellout, he's just a bullshit artist. And it's a very interesting show And like I mentioned before I, I, I found these guys from another podcast And now the podcast ended up being a piece of shit And I like these two And yep. I got I got on there on, on, the, on the bandwagon early on Right. And I, I just been really Tied to them And I'm always supporting Showing them love and shit like that And they called out for me to be On their Jump the Sharp episode Right Which is What is that about? Basically Jump the Shark is a terminology that was actually created by John Hine from oh, nice. the Stern Show, the, the food worker, the food critic, right? But Jump the Shark comes from a a um, episode of Happy Days from years ago, Happy where Days, Fonzie jumps over a shark tank. Oh wow! Right? Wow! So which I that... saw Fonzie on the track today, same hair and everything, and the jacket. <laughs> he had the leather jacket. Hey, all he was waiting for is hey. So yeah, it basically what? So basically what it is? It's meaning is that's when a show turns bad. It's a jump the shark moment when Fonzie jumped over the tank. It ruined the show. That's when Happy Days is just ruined. Uh, so okay. you you can as a matter of fact, we can actually do a jump the shark cutting a promo in the next couple of weeks to talk about when. Cause there there'll be a number of them that that happens in wrestling. And the times that like you made me go, I made me go ah fucking I'm done. Yeah, like the jump the shark episode like this, this week. No, yeah, exactly. Like we said this week when kidding. they when they fucking debuted Retribution. I hate or, to be negative, but this week, like I, I mean, honestly, I, uh, yeah, that shit. Uh, well, there's a lot of them in WWE. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I mean, it, when it, the, it could be any episode of wrestling. It could be when uh, Roman did the Beanstalk, Jack and the Beanstalk storyline with Big Show. That it could be the me, suffering uh, sucker tash. Yeah, like it could be any of that shit. So which I gave you a whole list of those. I'll do. My research. I don't even have to do research. I already yeah, know the top and, of the piece on that one. And it's a cool thing because you can reach out to the listeners of the show and ask them when was the jump the shark moment in right, wrestling for you. Right, right. The jump the jump the shark moment could could be in some people's eyes to where Vince bought WCW because it's like now nah, there's no competition. no competition. Right. That yeah, is the point. Yeah. So or an impact was the jump the shark moment. The um the AJ Styles fucking drug fucking pregnant woman shit. Yeah, there's a lot. That there's a shit. Lot. There's a lot. Yeah, so we we, we which can, we, if, if if I put it up tonight, I could probably get some answers tomorrow because uh, I already told Rondo. I well, I didn't tell Rondo. Rondo told me. 
about the he reminded me, reminded me of the draft tomorrow, which I completely forgot. Um, so I'm gonna do a, a pre show at seven fifteen. But I think I might just do um thirty so minutes mark tonight about it. So um, about the, the about the draft, we'll see what what that's about. So any case, uh, they reached out to me. And they, they 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 know that I'm a big Stern fan and they know my history. So I was on there. They gave me the probably the biggest segment of wow. their. Of their show. Do you want to know why? Because you are a likable guy and you know your shit. It was funny because I was um, he the 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 host initially lives like in fucking Indonesia or some shit like that. Wow, well, and, what a state! Right, so it's a country. I know that, uh, that was the point of the joke. Oh, okay. But it's alright. Well, that went past my head, your head. So um, yeah, yeah. gotta use the sound effects. So <laughs> so make, make it worthwhile. Shit. Exactly, or it could have been. I mean, sure. <laughs> Granted, it was a terrible joke. So, but, you know. um, he, I, when I'm when I'm when I'm posting into the group, it's usually at one of my work hours. So he hits me up. And he goes, "Oh, are you listening to the episode?" And I'm, I'm like, "Yeah, I'm listening to it right now. I'm, I'm early on." He goes, "Dude, you had one of the probably the biggest responses during wow. the the YouTube stream. It's awesome." So I was like, "Oh, really?" But the shit is, you can't see because I was listening to on the podcast, right? On the site, not yeah. on the YouTube, right? So you can't see the comments. So I'm like, ah, fuck. Uh, so you basically, can't check your clout. Yeah, I can't shit. check my clout. But well, he, he always shouts us out. He always gives us, you know, he always shouts out Turnbuckle Travel. Much love, like that. much love. I appreciate that. And I and I, and I was actually able to finagle some wrestling fans in there. Where, so I, let me just give a sneak peek of what uh, was going on do there. You know how much Artie had to do with the final straw. And then the decade before, By the people way, would argue. Sam, we'll go through I've seen, I've showed you the Sam. Show Jesus. Of thing, things that wow. we think. We don't, we don't know gorgeous. each other's lists. That's going to be part of the fun to see if we have simpatico on all the. Uh, uh, he even shot it out our rig. Could be like, uh, uh, because he did it on video. Moments. Much love. But, no, I'm dying to know what you have. Well, you're going to have to wait, my dear. So let's hear. Uh, from James Santiago, who's uh, my whole gov, one, but your it's whole good government, one. damn he's son. Two, he's a J, nothing. Um, the whole two gov. examples he'd like to talk about. He's a great poster. Right, Hi, James. This time we have James Santiago of Turnbuckle Tabloid. He's got his own podcast himself, and he's a loyal QF fan as well. So, James, thank you for agreeing to listen to the audio. Share, speak your piece with us. Oh, first time calling a long, long time listener. I've been wanting to say that for a long time. And James sounds so so like pimp because he's got his, he's he was uh, recording in uh, via his his studio and I was using the worst goddamn microphone you could wow. imagine on the planet. Oh, how the tables have turned! Good, no, like, exactly right. Used by Thank you, Roadcast. Yeah, go ahead, yeah Sam. really. He's such a funny commenter on our page. He always makes me Ooh. literally burst out laughing out loud anytime Ooh. I check it and he makes a comment. I am always. Buckled over. He's very, yeah. very funny. He's gold. I know that. He's gold. Tickled your fancy <laughs> here and there. What? That and I know you. Yeah. I know you. One nipple got hard. I One. That's, 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 that's like your favorite nine, compliment. If a girl tells you that. That York, I'm funny. Yeah. All over the place. Over. Mm -hmm. And um, he was always interested. I was. I was in my early teens, and you would bounce around the dials. You go from audio. New York City. Yeah. You had Z100. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. In the morning, before going to school, you just click the dials. When, did you do that at work? Uh, oh, radio station did you record this? Their, huh? You know, did you record this? Radio, I was here. You just click the stern, right? and all of a sudden, he was there. No, 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 no. And he was saying this stuff. This was last week. Oh, was it? That yeah. you Sounds... really didn't hear on radio. And he was like, oh, okay. So it wasn't really, you know, it, it, was, it was at that time where I started gravitating to him. But So, yeah, guys. Check them out if you're a Howard Stern awesome, guy. Man. Check out, um, quite frankly, a Howard Stern podcast with um, Fillmore, uh, Fillmore Fingers. <laughs> Fillmore Fingers. <laughs> and Sam. Like cookie. I love, I love that podcast. And, uh, yeah, they show they always show us love there. Rip on and, Howard, yo. Fuck Howard Stern. Uh, I mean, do, do you hate Howard Stern? Like, No, I don't hate him. I just Disappointed? At the, end, at the end of that segment, I even forgot that I said it. There was the... the, the there was two... There was two... Um, there was two on uh, one of those uh, those affirmations that you always say that uh, iron sharpens iron that we always say when yeah. Howard went to because my jump the shot moment was when he went to Sirius because there was right. no competition right and the other right. one was when uh, when they got to Sirius Artie just 
he became dark, and they yeah. allowed him to get that way, and they fed off of it, and it was fucked up. Well, that's what pissed me I off. I also hated when Jackie left. When Jackie and, and Billy left. I know, that was I your favorites. It. Yeah, but... I, when, the, one th- the one thing I always say I hate about Howard is, like, they knew Artie was going to a dark place, and they found it fun for entertainment. Right. And they took advantage of him going to a dark place for, place for radio. Right, right, right. And so, I think that's where Artie got pissed, too. It's like, dude, you see, like, what the fuck? Like, you see me, like, get, becoming a dark, dark human being, and you're laughing at me. Like, yeah. Like, that's not a friend. I, be- I became fodder for you. Yeah, so yeah. That's, yeah that, Which, but, that's not a true friend at all. Yeah, at all. so it, it, that, that's why when they had the big bro fight, it was fucking hilarious. Uh, yeah, well, that's, I mean, they can listen, I, can, I can watch that shit over and over again 30 times, and I'll be all happy laughing. So, yeah, that was um that was one. But the, it was the Iron Sharpens Iron and the, um, the, 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 the premise of uh, y- y- you, um, it gets to that point where your hero becomes the villain. Well, yeah, and believe me, I've been, I've been there. Believe me, yeah. But don't meet your heroes, ladies and gentlemen. But other than that, welcome everybody to another episode of Turnbuckle Tabloid. I am your host, Mister Ear to the Mat, the King of Tall Style, and as always, the Cheap Thrill, J the Red Santa, and I am the Mook with the Mic. Matthew Wolski. Make sure you check us out on all social media outlets. Check us out on the like group page on Facebook. Like and group page on Facebook. I have to repeat that because you guys share, share more there. Share, share more there. Also, make sure you check us out on Instagram at Turnbuckle Tabloid Podcast. Just to be clear with everybody I'm, else. I'm banned, from, I'm banned from sharing on Instagram. Are you? I'm banned. How? Supposedly one of our captions had a bad word. And I got banned. How you got banned? I got banned. I punched. I tried sharing the thing about three weeks ago, and I hit up Instagram about it, and I can't share. I can't. I can't post on my personal page no more. For like on a, your personal page, my personal page is locked. I even hit up Instagram about it. I don't know what that means. I can't post on my page. We share a Turnbuckle Tabloid page. My my my, my personal, which I'm not giving you guys, my personal Instagram page. I oh, can't post wait, hold anything on. right now. Hold on. It's fine. Yeah, because that's weird. It's uh, fine. Whatever. But make sure you check us out also on Twitter at Turbuckle Tab always, and on YouTube, Anchor, and uh, as always, make sure you check us out on all those other social media outlets at Turbuckle Tabloid YouTube. Every it's funny because I still look at the YouTube and I'm like, I really don't give a fuck. I don't either. I don't to be care. honest with you, I don't, our audience isn't there. But like, it, I don't. But it, I don't care. Extra stuff. But I do have to tell you that the numbers are growing on all the podcasting outlets. Well, that's important. Shout out that's, to that's, Big that's Rich, the boss. About. That's the goal. Big Rich the Boss is letting us know that numbers are growing uh, exponentially. Good. Shout out to all what our word. listeners oh, that what are. A word. Holy shit. I know sometimes I pull it out my ass. Shout, uh, I applaud you for that one. Shout out to Jeez. all our, our listeners in, in Belgium, India, and in England. You guys are showing us. Oh, and also in, in, in um, uh, uh, China. No, sorry. Japan. Wow. All you guys who listen to us out there. Thank you for supporting. Make sure you let everybody. I, I'm still perplexed on how the fuck you understand us, but okay. But thank you for. for, uh, yeah. for I want to know if they like dub our shit. Like, like they, they like Japanese dub us. Like I, they speak I, over I, us. Like and, and translate. <laughs> that would be fucking uh, hilarious. Be, <laughs> I would do a reaction on that. What one. is that the should... fucking Japanese dub for motherfucker? <laughs> when they, when I'm, we talk I'm, about I'm, Trump, I am. Uh, yeah, well, like, yeah. Ooh. Well, um, all I gotta say about last night was flies attract the shit. Oh God, let, let, uh, we'll get to that in a second. But make sure you check us out there. If not, make sure you check us out on all, like I said, all podcasting outlets, uh, Google Play, Spotify. Now on Amazon Music, we're all we're everywhere. You you cannot. I, tr- I, I, tr- not I, tr- find I tried us. listening to uh, I listened to us on Amazon Music to try it out. Pretty good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I did. I, I like the it's way it's actually it runs pretty out. clear, and actually the, our logo looks pretty dope on there as well. So. And if you can't get us there, you always can get us at RageWorksNetwork.com. RageWorksNetwork.com is where you get all the shows. Call me when it's over. Black is the new black. Uh, Toys and Tags, Trek Untold, and of course Turnbuckle Tabloid. You get us all there, and possibly something new coming up on the way. So shh. We'll let you guys know wow. when it happens. I don't even know about that, so... I'll uh, let you guys know when it happens. So <laughs> There you go. Make sure you check us out there. And as always, RageWorks.net. RageWorks.net is where you get all the previews, reviews of everything that is in the culture in which we live for. Pop culture, baby. And that is video games, movies, TV shows, uh, comic books. It's all there for you guys. Just got uh, Mafia Definitive Edition. How was that? Um, it looks beautiful. It's uh, a I know great the, the graphics. Game. The graphics seemed it's a amazing. Great looking how's, how's game. the gameplay though? Uh, I have to get back to it because, like I said, I've never played the first one. Right. But as for what I'm playing, it's just it's like, okay, I could I could play this. Right. Also, you have you been have you played on um, the Mario 35? No. Bro. Oh my Bro. god, Bro, dude, that had... game is so fucking fun. Bro. I haven't played any games, bro. I yeah. haven't played nothing. The I hate Mario, to sound depressing, but the, last game I played was Fall Guys two weeks ago, the, and I miss it. The Mario Battle Royale, it's free on Switch. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I haven't I, even played thirty five um, Mario All Stars yet. The um yeah. the the battle royale, it's 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 you got to pick up and play. And once you once you pick it up quick, you'll get it quick. You'll understand the game. So I, I, I think the premise is every time you you hit an item, it goes to someone else's screen or something like right, that. Right, but it's different uh, reasons. It could be for coins. It could be for time. It could be for. Uh. Sounds you can right. add more is enemies. Is it too on much the... on a screen at once, or is no, it like you no, don't know what no. you're doing? You're, like, you're, you're so focused on you. You're so into it, and once you're playing the game and it's going on, I've gotten to a point to where I've probably died at 35. Yep. And finished at second. In wow, you got been, close. Yeah, I've wow. been I've been there. So. Do you win a golden mushroom or something like a golden crown? I like it because you get a lot of rewards. All right, well, that's you, what I like. Yeah, you pick up a lot of rewards. And it's free to play. Like. So yeah, I like it's, uh, I like it's that. A good one. But um, before we continue to the to the next segment, as always, and close out opening salvo, can't leave opening salvo without talking about fucking politics. Of course not. I, without I, talking about what the fuck was the travesty um, that occurred uh, this past weekend, where well, your beloved piece of shit in office uh, apparently is undefeated when it comes to COVID. He said, "I'm immune." That's what he said. And I quote: "I might be immune. You know, I don't know." <laughs> Well, speaking of which, the only positive thing in politics was the Saturday Night Live ripoff of the fucking debate. That show was oh fucking hilarious. Oh my god, Jim oh. Carrey, you, 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 you were perfect as as Biden, and of course, Trump was Trump. You know, uh, yeah, that was a it was fucking hilarious. Alec Baldwin is. I watched hilarious. it on my lunch break last yesterday, and I was yeah, fucking yeah, in fucking tears. Great. But 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 please, just enlighten. How was it that this piece of shit? Was able to go in and out of a fucking hospital. Um, well, supposedly, you know, he gave, he got a high, he got a, he got a drug, a fucking elixir that only a few people have gotten. The dude walks outside already on his white, on the White House lawn and takes his fucking mask off, which was still with COVID. Uh, which I don't know if you heard this now. He refuses to have a virtual debate because it's a waste of time. No, it's not a waste of time. He's just scared they can mute his mic, okay? And again, they scared they could, they could press Zoom and hang up on him. <laughs> I mean, honestly. <laughs> um, he, 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 he is promoting non-mask wearing in a world where our, it's spiking. He, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't like telling you who to vote for, but at this point, if it's not clear, I don't know what to tell you. I, I honestly don't know what how you could support that. The dude walks out with no mask with COVID. He 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 had okay. Of course he had he had to drive in a limo with fucking people to say hi out of the hospital, but now they have to quarantine. Like he cares about nobody but himself. He and Mike Pence ain't better either because that dude lied ninety ninety percent of the time last night. So which was fact checked ninety percent he lied. But so it, everyone could do me a favor there and just fucking please. You know what kills me about this fucking piece of shit in office? But it, it, what kills me is. First of all, he doesn't want to debate because there's no audience. Because that's what he feeds off of. He wants laughs. He wants bull. He wants. He, he wants, wants a, a response, and he knows that it encourages him and empowers him yeah. to get over. Listen, I'm an entertainer. I'm a fucking dickhead. When I'm in a group of people and I get a, a reaction from something that it I say or I did, fire. it fuels me. Right. But at the end of the day, I still could get on this mic where the only person that I have is you in front of me. Right. I don't know anybody's reaction to the fucking goofy shit that we say here, but oh. we still fucking do it. Because we're family. I mean, oh. we, we, we can bounce off each other. But not only that, I don't know what the audience is thinking. I don't get a fucking feedback until after you hear in commentary that later on in the comments. So, we don't get a live audience. I mean, I, But him, his ego feeds that. Okay, Number would two, you ever do that? What? Would you ever go, would you ever like rent out the Elks Lodge and do a live recording? I would love to do a live Turbo Tabloid episode. With people sitting down like a, like a live reading at Barnes & Noble or some I shit like that? I would love to do that shit. That'd be funny. <laughs> one day, be one day, fucking great. We could do a live Turbo Tablet. That's some real shit. This party hall you did for Sally's old birthday. I would just rent that shit out and do a Turbo Tablet live viewing. Like, I was why just not? talking about about um, why the fuck not? I, I mean, we gotta grow. That'd once awesome. it starts opening up on the um, the the city starts opening up a little bit more. Yeah, where finally we could go to these shows and shit, and we yeah. could talk to. Uh, so certain promoters be like, yo, let's do a fucking live turbuncle tabling, man. I love it, shit. man. That'd be a cap. That'd, that'd, that'd be the goal. Man, I love it. But the other thing, it's um. It's it's the 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 idea of him giving this 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 false hope to people that you could walk around and interact with individuals without without getting this shit. You're fucking your your bullshit ass fucking uh, gathering at the White House lawn. When you couldn't breathe lawn. and he couldn't. No, no, eat, I'm talking you, about before that. It's oh, where yeah, that. you guys were patient zero. You were super spreading there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously, he was and a bunch of y'all. What what are your what are your thoughts on um which which you you said this in the entire the entire time but now that he said it I want your did it change uh, he said treat COVID like it's the flu, right now 
Because that's like that's the one I was waiting for your response on. Because I know you were saying that it's the flu plus for a while. Right, and mind you, I'm, I, and, and we and I did a, 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 a I did a whole turnaround with it. We had a conversation with with, with with Hank Flanagan one time, and I actually pulled that episode. Yeah. Because I really after after a week or so, I felt that episode was very insensitive. Because wow, you pulled it. I pulled it. This was the first time we ever pulled it. And I, never, then, I didn't even knew that. Yeah, we pulled the episode and Flanagan came back again and I, and we discussed it on the show that it was very insensitive because after working where I work at and listening to what I'm listening to and hearing, seeing what's going on and the people that I work with or work or, or work alongside who are busting their ass and don't have the medical supplies or the equipment and are working these 36 hour fucking days and busting their ass and doing all that. That's probably Uncle Fred. And doing all that, I realized that you can't take this lightly. This is something that affects everyone differently. It's almost like the Russian roulette of fucking. It's like the Russian roulette of of, of, of this virus because everybody and their fucking mother, it affects them differently. Ow. You're right. You fucking bang Holy your knee. shit, that hurts. Bang your knee. Bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. But so, so you don't agree with that no more. No. 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 What I agree with is yes, it is a super flu. But what I what I uh, I do have but don't in treat consideration, it like the you don't treat it this way because yeah, no. now it's a thing to where you don't know. You don't play Russian roulette with this shit. No. You don't know what the you, fuck you, you this is. You can't. You don't you can't. know how the fuck this affects anybody. Yeah, no. You know, and especially like I said, I put up a post about this motherfucker goes out there. He puts himself in the in, or, or that he was told to go into this Walter Reed facility. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Prestige fucking hospital. They're, Which they, once again, he's getting the best treatment in the country. So they don't uh, have the fucking same kind of fucking. No. Uh, uh, um, Chaos, uh, uh, chaos, or, or or individuals who are going in and out like we had during the, those early months, yeah. where patients are stacked on top of each other. Yep. They don't have that fucking that 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 lack of staff, the the lack of equipment, and all that shit. They didn't have that. The lack opinion, of medicine. In my opinion, I feel like they just gave him a golden pill and was like, "All right, let's try you out." I don't yeah. even believe the motherfucker had it. Let's just say that. Let's say wow. he did. I believe this is probably one of those those things to where. He said he had it just to dodge a fucking debate or even to say, look at me, I could survive it and you can too. And his dumbass followers would sit there and do him. That's what I thought. But then, but, I, but then I saw him come out, like go to the White House the first time and he couldn't breathe for shit. He's fat, he's old, he probably has asthma. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but at the end of the day... Fat, old, and asthma. Wow. I still think that he's he, he he's giving false hope to individuals. They're still trying to push this vaccine. They're trying to do all this shit. And it was, a, like I said, the, the person that I'm always fighting with, oh, well, you know there's a 99% Sex or whatever. So listen, do me a favor. Take a knee on this one because this fucking comment that I made is personal. Because at the end of the fucking day, my uncle who passed away from this shit, yep. co-workers who died uh, uh, because of it or attributed to it. Yeah, you don't fucking play Russian roulette with people's lives no, when it comes to this. No, and he super is. flu, yes. COVID, but this no. means that it's going to fucking attack you differently. Yep. So you don't know who the fuck and how the fuck it's you called get it. super for a reason. I mean, you know, uh, I just that motherfucker I, sat there, and then some idiot is gonna tell me, "Well, you know, you could discharge yourself. You don't have to be. You you can refuse on treatment." I said, "No, stupid. Not during the fucking pandemic, yeah, you ass. Right. I work in a hospital. Right. You don't fucking get discharged or fucking refuse a uh, a." Uh, uh, some kind of a treatment when you have and during a pandemic when you could be a fucking uh, 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 a super of passer of this fucking virus. A super passer. They don't let you fucking go. No, they don't. No. And then this stupid ass goes, well, I worked in a, a courthouse for 34 years. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Who said that? Some dickhead on my phone. How on does the, that give you any credibility to, to this? To, to, to I health? tell you I work in a hospital. You're going to fucking rebuke me with courthouse shit. That's like me saying I work at City Field so I know everything about basketball. That makes no <laughs> sense. That makes no <laughs> sense. That 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 that, 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 now, that makes zero sense. You might as well have told me that I'm the fucking Monopoly champion. I'm yeah, like, okay, whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, Same shit. He could have told fuck? me he owns a Metro car and, 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 and it made and no still difference. got him where? Nowhere. nowhere, nowhere but Fresh Pond. It's He's just, bugging, like honestly, that made no, that was the stupid. worst argument point I've ever heard in my life. And like, quickly, when it goes, and just before we continue, because you know, as always, we do this, but we, we this fucking debate, it's just, it, 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 it's just, it, it's just horseshit. Yeah, it is. It's and literally, horseshit. And what is what does horseshit attract? Flies. And this is what the fuck we got. 
And you know someone on Facebook? Black flies matter, everybody. Black, Black flies, matter. flies matter. You know what someone said on Facebook? They said the fl- oh, you can't tell me the fly didn't come out of Kamala Harris's weave. I'm like, yo, you. I'm like, you bugging, dog. Wow. <laughs> I heard that. Wow. <laughs> wow. But I, 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 laugh, shit. I laugh because, you know, is Pence worse? He, you know what it is. I I love how um, Joy Be- Behar and, and she she finessed it in, in the view today. She goes. She goes as much as a fucking dick, you know. Not not saying she, not to, you know. We're paraphrasing here, but to say how much Trump is a dickhead, Pence is a smooth dickhead. Yeah, he's he doesn't like, make a fool out of himself. He's like a he, how she said it. She was like, uh, um, and like I said, I'm paraphrasing. He's like a a, a milk, a, a milk creamy Sunday. Okay. W- laced with arsenic and rancid and shit like that. So you're saying he's he's a dick, but he's more professional about he's it. He's smooth. Yeah, he's smoother. He he'll 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 lay your his dickhead out, right. out like like if he's putting like butter on toast. But listen, when you go, make it make it palatable. But listen, when you compare Pence to a four year old uh, like Trump is, I mean, <laughs> anything's better than that. Uh, uh, it's just it's, anything's it's just, better than him. Ridiculous. Which, by the way, the SNL skit when they fucking remote and they put the pause button on him, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> like, oh, it's just great. Jim Carrey, I'm so happy you're back in in, in SNL, man. It was a great. The, what, they picked the perfect fucking. They um, did. And Biden. I didn't watch the debate last night, but I, all, all I know is, like I said, ninety percent of it was fucking. It was was proven that he fucking lied about yeah. it, and people still go, "Wow, I love lying." It's like, I don't understand that. I don't but believe, okay. like I said, I don't believe these numbers. I don't believe this. Uh, it's um, uh, uh, Biden has a fifteen, fourteen percent lead. I don't believe in that. I, I don't believe in any of those until numbers. I get proof until, until I see the numbers I, and the election. I'm and good. I don't believe in none of that shit because at the end of the day, all that matters is this fucking electoral college bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Once I start seeing those, 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 those fucking red states turn blue. Which that's, is happening that's, that's all I give a fuck about So Other than that Shaquille O'Neal never voted in his life And he said I, I voted this year Yeah so it, It's so It's it, important it's, it's important And it's gonna be a long fucking run Because like I said Those Those Those, those mail-in ballots we'll are take gonna be longer long. Yep So it's don't expect be... a result on election day Ladies and gentlemen It's not gonna happen But like I said um, it, it, Listen and, I, I, and, I'm, and I'll go into it more later on And be, when, once some um, voting uh, begins But I'm one of those that say, although I'm not the one that do, that 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 partakes in it, I expect every every. I have my own reasons for it, but I expect and part and hope that you guys partake. Go out there and vote, especially you young motherfuckers. And you, you some of you young guys, are fucking creeping me out with this Trump supporter shit. And yeah, I know. Fuck you, Governor of fucking Puerto Rico. Yeah, really. I have one word for you. She said nobody's perfect. Pendeja. You only saying it because you took you 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 were given the thirteen billion that was owed to you three years ago, and you took it now because he's trying to buy votes. You know what you do? Like my grandmother would do. You look at somebody who you know is full of shit and wants to give you a birthday present or give you an envelope. You smile on their face. You take it and you say gracias, and you walk away. And you go, Male gratis, pendeje mierda, mira que jodi. I don't know that one day. Yeah, but other than that. <laughs> Um, what do we have so what's what do we have on uh, Turbo Cotabo this week? Well, this week we have uh, cutting a promo is unionizing wrestling. Uh, a union possible a possible uh, idea of uh, having a union in wrestling. I know uh, a few wrestlers have gotten in trouble for bringing up this idea, but after uh, Vince taking everyone's fucking Twitch and Paige getting legal trouble, etc., we have to talk about it. Uh, wrestling rundown we have this week. Uh, NXT has no good, no luck, no luck. Rich Holland's out for a year. It's a fucking mash you. Rich Holland's out for a year. Uh, it's it's it, it, NXT is. It, and I thought it, that was a really dumb spot too. It was. It was a dumb spot. Yeah. Um. And it wasn't necessary. Uh. We have AEW. Um. Drama going on in the back with supposedly, um, supposedly Tony Khan not being happy with some of the talent. Um. And, and supposedly, um. This is this is good. Um. A, a part of wrestling run uh wrestling rundown this week is indeed rumors of. The draft and what it means for the future of WWE. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Also, did you know that Tony Khan is a real fucking asshole across the pond when it comes to their football club over there? Oh, is he? They hate him. Oh, well, I can't wait to find the that one. The fans and the media hate him. Wow. So he's the Trump of over there? <laughs> <laughs> they can't stand All right. him. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, shit. I, w- I would love to get more in tune of what. That uh, that that circus is when it comes to football out there, soccer and, well, and European. I and love soccer. So- listen, I, never I like the, I like the style, yeah. but I don't understand the, the game. Whole shit. No, no, the game I understand. It's just the politics. Like 
you could get a team that if you don't make a certain level that they send you down to the fucking D-League and shit. Wow, it's I like, know that. If, you know how the Knicks, they never make the fucking playoffs, whatever? <laughs> never. Or if you're like in the bottom three of that league, they send you to the D-League. You have to earn your way back up. That sounds like semi-pro, remember? Some shit remember, like remember that. All the teams got up to the NBA and it was like, if you're in the bottom three, like fourth place, you fucking got dropped. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, something yeah. like that. And they do it every year and then they have to like buy players. And I, oh I my God. Yeah, yeah, my brother, my brother loves soccer and he, and he, he, he tell, knows he, all that. Yeah. And he tells me, I would me, love to get him on the show one day. Like, get I know, but he knows quick. everything. And, yeah. and the thing is like, he was telling me the amount of money that they're playing, say paying for these players. And yeah, it is it's outrageous. ridiculous. And it is outrageous. These guys are sitting there whoring each other out on that shit. Yep. Oh, it's a, it's, it's a whole, my brother told me it's a whole political, it's, 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 it's a big deal over yeah. there. It's no joke. And around the square circle, of course, we do the rundown of what will occur during the week. We'll talk about uh, TakeOver 31, yeah, which I, was... Uh, which was, that was really good. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed very much Best of that. Best TakeOver in months, in my opinion. And, of course, uh, the... AW I wasn't mad at. Yeah? Really? I wasn't mad at AW this week. Yeah? I really had no problems with it besides the main event. I might have... Fucking I, Luther. Really? Um, I might, uh, I, yeah, I might have some qualms about certain that things. That pissed me off. Raw was um, interesting. Right. And uh, SmackDown, we don't know yet. So <laughs> we'll find out. But guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. We'll return. Check you guys in a sec. Oh, fuck Trump. Later. See wow. you soon. There's a war that rages within the eastern seaboard. A war that's underlying in which no one's supposed to know except when it's exposed on social media. You've heard of West Side Story. Well, in the indie scene, there is any side story. Game Changer Wrestling. ICW, No Holds Barred, East Side Story, The Musical, that's right, we here at Turnbuckle Tabloid will bring you the war between both faction, but in a Broadway musical way, listen to the most fabulous way that both parties come together and want to share and tear off their clothes and sweat all over everyone that's in the audience and be half naked and be Ooh, hold on a second I'm just, I just got hot listening to it in any case be entertained by the two factions Game Changer Wrestling and ICW No Holds Barred as they butt heads about who dominates the East Coast with Musical montages such as Brett's song. When you're with Brett, you regret to you take your first bump, then you take your first cut to your head. When you're with Brett, you take barbed wire to your face, then you go down. You're a man, you're a king. Listen to ICW's retort to how GCW stole their idea and what was to be a prominent and dominating industry in the eastern seaboard I feel petty also petty I feel petty with game changer B I feel petty cause they stole the ideas from Danny Brett Lauderdale wants to show how much he's showing off in this battle between two of these promotions and he wants to rub it in their face of how his business is way better than what's going on in ICW No Holds Barred with a song like Money Chairs fold With chair shots to the face Light bulbs to the base Tickets are sold The most passionate song during this Montage of music and wrestling and men's showing their love is done during this epilogue and climactic performance from Danny DeMonto showing how much he shows how he cares and loves for 
the man who's known in the New York scene to bringing forth the biggest star. Oh! Play the music. Jack Tavis. I just met the most beautiful promoter in New York, Jack Sabbath. I see WNY no holes bar promoter, Jack Sabbath. Jack Sabbath. Get a sneak peek of behind the scenes detail of why Jack Sabbath has a hatred for Brett Lauderdale in musical form just as... A guy like that will shake your brother. Forget that guy, go fuck his mother. One of your own kind, deathmatch your own kind. And once the war rages on, pull back the layers and take a gander of who is the peak of interest in the war between ICW, No Holds Barred, and Game Changer Wrestling. It's a man with very little teeny weeny pair of trunks and a lot of mouth. Chris Dickinson, gay Chris Dickinson, be cool boy, don't be macking, just relaxing, be cool boy, go out and wrestle, don't worry about ICWNY boy, be cool boy, be cool boy. Turnbuckle Tabloid presents East Side Story, a battle between Two of the most prominent deathmatch hardcore read. You know what? Who really cares? Because honestly, you guys are nothing but in the same mix of same nonsense bullshit wrestling that uh, uh, I guess everybody is growing accustomed to if they have a long beard and enjoy big beard glasses and don't really know what wrestling's about and if they enjoy the light bulbs and invisible wrestlers and chain rings and whatever the case may be. Listen, enjoy your matches. You guys should have a good time and enjoy your promotions by the case may be. Real wrestling is not about that, but at the end of the day, East Side Story, a uh, Broadway, well, not a real, not Broadway is off Broadway. Actually, it's the Broadway in Brooklyn that's next to the hospital where uh, they have uh, Bodega in one corner and they also have the fried chicken spot that's up the block and then the Foot Locker, which was looted not too long ago. And you also can get the Walgreens. But anyway, there's a there's a place where they do the play and they uh, they do it. In any case, East Side Story. Brought to you by Turnbuckle Tabloid. Turnbuckle Tabloid cutting a promo. Shout out to all our people at VXS this past weekend. Legends never die. It was a great show for you guys, man. And uh, as always, big shout out to our, our brother Isaac and all the talent that was out there. Be sure you check them out on Fight, on the Fight app. Still up there making making numbers, man. For people who don't think that they were doing a thing, they're doing a big thing out there. So check out VXS. Legends never die. So. This week, we embark on a conversation of unionizing wrestling. So, Olski, give him a rundown of where this is coming from. Well, I mean, this conversation has been, sorry, 
this has been a conversation of thought for many years in the wrestling world. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Who, um, David Starr actually was banned from WWE, I'm pretty sure, for even bringing up the idea. I think he was banned from wrestling. Yeah, he's banned from wrestling in general for even bringing up the idea, but... I think uh, it'll it's 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 growing um, it's growing more uh, um, in the topics due to um, Vince basically taking away um, uh, third party um, accounts from from his from his wrestlers like Paige, AJ Styles, Twitch, um, Cameo, and a bunch of other um, third party um, apps. They took their accounts, and Vince now gives them a small share, and that's it. A piece, like some mafia mob shit, which you pointed out on the phone the other night. Uh, it's like it's like you see a dude hustling good. You take his job and say, now I'm giving you a small cut. How about that? And you, t- you take the whole gimmick. Uh, but the, the the topic of unionizing wrestling, has, having a union in wrestling, has been around for quite some time. I mean, when, when was the first time you ever heard about that idea? It came back from... Uh, um... In the late 80s, early 90s, apparently, the thought was that Hulk Hogan was the one that was doing it. But in fact, it was Jesse the Body Ventura who brought the idea of uh, unionizing wrestling. And it was... um, It's the whole premise of not just other wrestling promotions it's because of WWF and WWE yep. that this is the reason because of the restrictions that the company lays out to them it uh they can't do shit besides wrestling <laughs> i mean it sounds you like you don't make them full time staff right so you hinder you 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 hinder them from getting any of the benefits from that yeah but then you also are upset when they're able to make outside monies. So it doesn't it doesn't really make any sense to really justify what what they are as performers or wrestlers. Well, yeah, you know, listen, I'm not the biggest fan of Cameo. I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of some of these third party apps, but I'll tell you, um, when I when I when I saw because Red w- w- during COVID, what were we doing? We're doing what? Cameos. We were making sure to <laughs> shout out to everybody. What were, what, were, what were we playing? Um, all the time. Video games. Video games. Right. So what does AJ Styles and all these other wrestlers do? Um, I'm on the shelf sitting down, not no idea when I want to come back. And, and, and when I do, there's no live events. I'm, I'm, I'm working. Think about it. WWE's working AEW schedule right now. They're working once a week per brand. Right. So I go to Florida for one day of, of the week, and I go home. What else do you expect me to do to make a couple of extra dollars or even just have some fun? Stream gaming. The number one thing in the world right now is game is video game streaming. It is it, it is all over the world. Twitch, uh, Mixer, whatever the whatever it is, Facebook gaming. It, it, you have an opportunity to stream games, and it is and it's honestly very popular right now. So what do you think the other wrestlers did? They did it. The wrestlers decided to 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 go outside of their comfort zone. Start streaming some shit. Have some fun. By the way, the guys, phone lines are open three three one five three seven one four three six seven. 4367 The phone lines are open 315-371-4367. Give us your thoughts about what's going on in the wrestling industry in which do you believe whether or not they should be unionized. And also, should these wrestlers who are considered independent wrestlers, independent contractors, uh, should they be allowed to go anywhere else? And like I said, this is only a WWE issue because... AEW promotes their wrestlers on Twitch <laughs> and other stuff. Well, let me ask you this, Red. And I'll get to that in a second as yeah. well, but... Uh, um, I, I want to yeah, ask you a question. Okay. Do you think Vince would would have would, would be on everyone's asses if they weren't as successful as they were? That's a great fucking question, honestly. Because, because... because Paige is very successful on Twitch. She's making at least 45 k they're saying like they're making, she's making some dodo a month a month a month alone so do you think Vince would be on their asses if he didn't see, if, if if the numbers weren't that high uh, JD uh, I see you commenting that you should call in because you're a union guy and I was I was gonna go down the lines to, as 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 myself I'm a union man uh, and I want people to understand the pros and cons of being a union person so we could go down that that that, that avenue but um. Yeah, if it was something that was very low key, they were ma- they were making money, and it was under the radar that you know they were probably making about ten, fifteen thousand, something like that. Right. It wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been nothing. But that's what I'm saying. But they see, they see they see the grind and the success, then they get a little bothered, right? Because they know that 
it exposes them as a promotion that they're not paying their talent. Yeah. They're not doing well for their talent. They're not covering their talent's uh, necessities and needs as wrestlers and performers. Mm -hmm. You don't have a, 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 a health plan. You don't have any uh, uh, any cover for medical. The only thing I think they have is that bullshit-ass fucking um, drug abuse kind of fucking shit. Right, right. But a lot of times, transportation is, is taken out of the, the, the talent's pocket. Yep. They have to go from which they don't get which, any re, they don't get a reimbursement from it. Which was actually um, Goldust's um, Dustin Rhodes' main issue with WWE. He was like, they were they they made me fly to to, to, to Raw every week when I did what? Walked Nothing. Around, walked around and said hi to people. Like I'm not wasting my money on these flights to not be working. Uh, it just didn't, doesn't make any sense. <laughs> to say, quite frankly, I don't know what. Which I didn't know until a couple of years ago that they didn't pay their, for their flights. No. Which that's bullshit in my so opinion. You, they should you, be paying for you flights. You think about it like this: you're 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 a paid talent. Well, wow, they're flaming me in this chat. Really? What? What do you mean? People are saying that cocaine does wonders. Oh. Uh, wow. <laughs> so, someone said someone said you can't sniff anything with that porn stash. You guys are haters, bro. What the fuck? Wow, really? This is your night to shine. How about a congratulations? <laughs> fuck you. Tell Broker uh, Tablet, who's this? What's up, Jay? What's up, OK? Marco Mook! Viva la raza, baby. What's up, Marco? Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? I'm I'm just trying to say that my audio and our audio here sound uh, hopefully it sounds good, but you sound like you're in a um, cave talking <laughs> in a, talking through a sock. You sound like you're in the you sound like you're in the cave of wonders from Aladdin, bro. You good? You okay? <laughs> yeah, it's okay, dude. All right. What's up? Uh, What's up? How are you guys doing over there? Good, 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 good. How how are we doing in Mexico, man? How's the COVID uh, actions going on over there? Well, well, we're, right now we're on demo. I think demo night right now. We're getting there, but uh, we're not that confident about it. So we're Wait. trying to do our best. Are people are people practicing are you your Wi-Fi over there? Are people practicing <laughs> social distancing and mask and all that? Yeah, right now they're doing it because they do. People are getting scared now. Oh, they now they get scared. They need, they need a mask. Yeah, they finally realize they need a the mask. <laughs> uh. So uh, I just had a ten kid one, so. I just walked two kilometers, man. Oh, good, good. Time. Get that, get that work on. I, 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 has it opened up a little bit more so you can do your your activities with the kids and everything? No, actually, we're trying to do maybe next week. We're just going to try to work with oh, not kids, but uh, high school kids or university girls and boys. Good, good. That's an awesome thing. That's beautiful, man. Good, good, good. So, what's your thoughts? Um, is there a union in, or any kind of benefits that's go, that goes on in Mexico and Mexican wrestling? Uh, actually, no. They don't have a union here in Mexico, man. The thing is that the worst enemy of the Lucha War right here in Mexico is the Lucha War, man. <laughs> well, what do you, what, what do you mean by that? Well, there's a lot of politics. People want to get, they, they want to uh, roll their own boats in. They want to go their own way, benefit themselves. We never get about helping each other so they can get more benefits. So that's why there's no union here in Mexico. Oh, is it a governmental thing out there? Because how how is it, how is it um, how is it is there any kind of union for anything in Mexico? Well, actually, it is uh, where I work. There's a union for uh, hospital workers by federal uh, federal uh, federal. Employees and state employees and city employees. So they have a union, yeah. So they have a lot of benefits, but they have to work like a union, like a family. And like here in Mexico, oh my God, they have a lot of problems with that because they've used the power. So there's a lot of there's a lot of shit there. <laughs> All right. So what 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 for for you being a union man? Um, what what's the pros of being a part of a union? Well, you know what? The benefits, uh, as I really said, the benefits you get, uh, many of uh, you can get, get a lot of help, help plans, and a lot of discounts, or like uh, coupons, or help like that, right? Like, you get it in uh, Christmas, uh, Christmas bonus, and all that. You get all that stuff. So... That's definitely the, the, the pros and the cons. Well, uh, 
Everything else? Like I said before, <laughs> yeah. They, but they don't do get those benefits and they don't pay you like a guy who is not in the union to pay, pay more because they discount a lot, of, a lot of taxes and all that. Right. So how do you think that it would benefit uh, or if not benefit uh, uh, the luchadors and the, the Mexican wrestlers in, in 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 your country, and how, how what, what 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 would would it be better if they were unionized or if not? You know what? The thing is that it would be better because they they don't have any health plans. Insurance companies don't want to pay uh, uh, medical expenses for luchadors. You know why? Because they're more prone to injuries or career and then career and then uh, uh, injuries. So pretty much uh, insurance companies don't want to pay it and uh, help them. They're not, they're no at all any health plans for them. So that's a big issue here in Mexico, man. All right. So Marco, once again, thanks for calling as always. And thank you for supporting. And, uh, uh, how do you think Oski's looking these days, man? Because apparently he's getting some heat. Uh, look at look, look, look at Oski. What do you think he looks like these days? Man, you remember him from the young, chubby little little, little um, pale skinned hairless man? How's it? By the way, your mustache looks terrible. What the hell did you do this time? Nothing. I didn't touch it's it. Horrible. I didn't touch it. You gotta talk to Marco. Real real mustaches come from Mexico. You gotta talk to Marco. I didn't touch it. So I didn't oh, touch it from last weird. week. Weird. So um, what what do you think? How do you think wow, about I'm Matt? Getting hated How over do you there. think Olsky's looking these days? How old people are doing here? Yeah, uh, Olsky. Olsky. Our boy, look at him. He's losing weight. Look at Olsky. How does he look? Oh no, he's hey, hey, he looks pretty cool, man. He, he's looking nice. Well, thank he's you, bro. I appreciate that. that. Even though everyone's saying I'm doing coke in the chat. We should I don't get, know if you're hitting the weights right now, but uh, you're doing cardio right now, right? Uh, I do like six miles a day, bro. Oh, that's cool. That's, uh, that's yeah, great, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying, bro. I just got to be consistent with it. So, it um, right now, I'm at one, 189. But uh, it's every, every, it's everyday thing, but I appreciate that. Even though people think I'm doing coke in the chat, it's fine. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Marco sent us. That's what he sent us the coke. Well, for real? Marco, I sent you. I sent you the address, didn't I? Yes, I have to. I'm waiting for the match for Oski, man. The match is ready. Wow. Mask is like, oh, okay, okay. Well, listen, it's complex. Ma- mask means um, three pounds of marijuana. That's what that means. That's code. That's everything. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, listen. We can't speak that into existence. You know what I'm saying? Marco, thanks again as always for calling in, sir. And thanks again for being a part of what we do here. And thanks for the support. Just give Oski as always the mook you want to give. Latino heat. Thanks, guys. Viva Later. la raza, baby. Viva la raza, baby. Wait, 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 wait. That's what I was waiting for. Damn right. So, <laughs> so union the unionizing of the uh, of the the wrestlers it 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 not only it's not only about what they have to do outside. Yeah. It also the it has to go inside with what is it that these companies these promotions what do they consider them? Do they consider them employees? Do they consider them as independent wrestlers? Do they cons- consider them as uh, extremities or, or what? What? What is it that they are? Well, the, the, or, or is a that, hired a hired talent. Is that a good, is, is that a good segue to what Andrew Yang said? Because is, is yes. it, didn't he didn't he say that uh, Vince technically can't be doing this and that he should be held accountable for this shit? Like how it's like they are independent contractors. All right, now check this. Well, first of all. California has already been passing a bill to where they're saying that they have a the, the independent contractors bill in California. So um, basically, what it is is that unless you are covering said independent contractors with, if not full benefits, but partial to where that you don't hinder them to. Ex- uh, um, Venture out to other properties, other right. companies, then 
you cannot hold them accountable to a contract. But this wasn't because of WWE. This had to do with other business practices. This had to do with like um, 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 tech companies. This right. had to do with like a uh, uh, landscape. So it was in shit. general, basically. In general, right. So you know, it was one of those things. But it came to light that WWE was under that spectrum because they fell in that way. Yeah. Now remember, WrestleMania that's upcoming is supposed to be in California. Not for long. But Tampa supposedly. Oh, but, but the we'll reason see. but you may think that the reason why is because of COVID and all this shit. But right. WWE may not be able to go there is because they might not follow the California rules of their independent contractors. Well, and they're saying that Florida is Florida is actually thinking about making like in a couple of months to bring full capacity to stadiums. No, real the real issue is he's ducking <laughs> the real issue, which is you can't go to Cali because at the end of the day, California is the bigger setting for what they want for their their show, their main event. Yeah, of course, Roman and, Ro- and probably and Rock, Rock, right? Roman and Rock got to be the main event this year. It's got to be. You got the battle of the families. You got the battle of... Yeah, it makes sense. The celebrities. In Hollywood. Um, Hollywood. You got the battle of the families. And... Uh, bloodline versus bloodline. bloodline. Whatever. And it fits perfectly it works. in Cali. It just works. So they fell face forward to where it's like, okay, we could do Florida again because, you know, they're, they're opening the doors up and, you know, the, the Samoan family is also in Florida as well. But... Piss that. Here's this. You have to also look at the idea that other companies don't give a fuck what their talents do outside of them. Them. Right. NWA, you walk off Impact, my platform, you do whatever you want. AEW. They don't care. They really don't give a fuck. As long as you come to their show and perform. They don't give a fuck. Well, you know to, why? Go. Because the majority of them don't own any names. They don't own any gimmicks. But they don't I own do, it. But 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 there has to be. You know, these promoters have to definitely say, "Listen, you do whatever you want, but don't look stupid." What do you mean? Explain. Like, like for for example, um, Impact. You said what, what's one of the promotions you said that doesn't that doesn't tell their people what to do? Uh, uh, Impact. Side? Impact. Okay, so for example, like Impact. So. Uh, Sammy Sammy Callahan's welcome to do whatever he wants, but but there has to be a promoter in the back that pulls him aside and says, "Listen, you're doing this Twitch gig, great. Just don't 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 say any racial shit, and don't curse, like don't look stupid." What are you talking I, about? Remember the RVD shit on Twitch? They had to shut his ass down. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was porn basically, <laughs> but but no, but no, but no, but, that, but no, but that was a part of the program, though. Right. I'm talking about like. Separately. Yeah. Right. Like, do you think they still tell them them like, listen, we don't care what you do. Just don't get in trouble and don't look stupid because it'll come back to um, us. That has to be a little like a little courtesy warning. Like, listen, I don't care what you do. Just don't make us look stupid by you doing some stupid shit. Like, don't pull a Jackson Riker and fucking start getting politically bullshit. Right. Do you think that's that's the case? Because I feel like they have to at least give them some sort of like push on the shoulder. Like, and eh, listen, don't look, make me look stupid. Well, I think that uh, um. Because not everything's free. I, I, 100% freedom here. There's got to be some sort of guidelines. There has to be some kind of restrictions, right? Okay. So, my thought profit, my, my, my thought process for this was, listen, if you're using a WWE gimmick in their name, yeah, then they have all the rights to to, to, to have control of that. Right, right. That's but, what yeah. And and they have the rights also to say, listen, you're under the guise of our promotion. Yes. I want to make sure that you don't go out of the realm. Look at what Xavier Woods. Look at fucking the up, up, down, down. They've been successful for with years. everything they've been doing for years. For years, yeah. Up, up, down, down has been successful for and more than And they've been playing years. it the right way. And up, up, down, down was there before WWE. Oh, big. That was Xavier Woods' solo I'm not even creation. sure. Does WWE control that now? No. I, they don't, right? No. Xavier right. owns it, but... Um, I think the deal was to sell up, up, down, down merchandise in the shop, and that WWE gets a percentage from that. Right, but as I as think it's for, about merchandise, not about content. For, no, I had a. We have to look that up. I don't think WWE owns it. Nah, they because don't. when I uh, when based on their content, on, they haven't changed at all. On uh, Instagram, 
or on on Twitter or whatever. It's not under WWE. No, it's under them separately. No, I truly think it was for merchandise purposes. Okay, I truly, so, I, I, I will go with that because they're because I, I still watch the content and it's the same as it always been. They didn't change nothing. They don't say sponsored by WWE. Right, right. right. They it's don't say dumb. any of that. No. So I think yeah, I think that he made that deal separately. Yeah, because I think, cause I think Xavier Woods was about to make his own up down down merchandise store and WWE said no. Nah, is nah, he nah, on nah. Twitch? Xavier Woods. Yeah. Um. Sometimes. He he has a Twitch account, and he but streams. his big money's on YouTube. His big money's on YouTube. YouTube oh, okay. is where the big bucks at, which okay. I, I can actually look it up right now. Right. Um. Up up down down right now. I think it's on YouTube. I think YouTube is the the yeah. big money for them. Up up down down has two point twenty one million subscribers on YouTube, uh, and, and and averages around um fifty to eighty thousand views on an episode. Right. Which that's money for YouTube. Of course. And so a, that, that that's where their bread and butters. And at. I think that's low. I think it's, I think that's low. It's low ball. for them. I I think it's low for up up down down. I think that's low. Yeah, yeah. For, for for them it is. Yeah, because I actually think that it did. Two million. I actually think, I actually think it's more. No, I think it's more. I think it's low balling. I think by the end of the year you'll find out that it's actually more than yeah, they get it. Probably. Um, they're very successful. I think the way where I you know what, what I think was the 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 big uh, caveat that put it over to say like yo these they, they we need to fucking. Police this I don't even think It was the Twitch I think it was the Cameo It was Cameo Because you were charging $400 for a hello I don't care about You saying hello For $400 uh, It I was, makes you I, look desperate Yeah It makes you look like You're craving money That's what shit Marty Jannetty would do Right Or one of the Rock and right, Roll right, Express right, right. No offense <laughs> Like like all the legends who need, Like Virgil Virgil is the definition Of Cameo Not Keith Lee I'm when sorry you, When you're a big name talent Who's making six figures, 300, 400, 500,000 a year? Yep. Is going on a cameo asking for $400 for a birthday, birthday. shout out. That sounds desperate. It sounds ridiculous because yeah. it shows that you're not making money yeah. where you're at. Clearly, clearly. Clearly. They're not that, or you're taking advantage of the fandom and getting an extra side cash for some bullshit. Right? Uh, like it's either it's dark either way, in my opinion. It doesn't. It it it. To I me, hate, I've always hated cameo. It doesn't make any sense because, look, l- l- let's look at the average uh, six figure wrestler on on a card, right? Right? And and which. You know, Ryback's stupid ass theory was like, "Well, you know, everybody should be paid equally." Like it's some no. fucking kind of fucking uh, uh, um, um, Stalin kind of a Marxist I'm sorry, kind of thought. Ryback, if you're champion, you're getting paid more. Like, so if you're a main event, you're gonna pay more. You're getting paid more. Doesn't work that way. If you get if your merchandise is booming, you're getting paid more. If, right? if Period. We, if we no. get if we get five hundred thousand fucking um followers every week on a show. Yep. And. It's a whole pay distributive kind of thing, and the, and there's a podcast that does wrestling as us, and they're only getting ten thousand, but they get to share our share. Fuck you. No, that's bullshit. Yeah, no, we I, earned our we shit. We earned our shit, and we'll get paid more. Uh, period. And, and and it's always been how it is in the business. Why do you think the championship means so much? Not because it it's a shiny gold belt, because you get the raise with the belt. But not only that, and but what well, well, not only that, but the fact is, is that listen, everybody earns their keep, and yep. also. Even if you're not holding a belt, your importance to the company means money, and you have to make money. That's yeah, what it is. That's the goal. Yeah. You know, and you could. To me, what's happening with this, um, the switch, the switch cameo kind of thing, and YouTube and stuff, it reminds me of WWE not letting independent wrestlers sell their merchandise. During an, an event at a show, right, right, like not have their own table because that's what it is to me. Yeah, you better buy it from me, or that's it. Not the wrestler himself. I never get it. I, I, I never, I never got it. I never understood. I'm not this dude that watches people play video games. I, I I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a right. watch and play kind of guy. Do you, do, do, do you get it to this day? No, I, and I don't. You know what I am? I'm, I, I'm not old school dude where. If you and I are in a room and we're playing a game we'll together, turns. we'll take turns. I'm because right. I heard. I, matter of fact, I heard the um the new um um uh, what you call it um uh, cr- um Crash Bandicoot. Crash uh, Crash Bandicoot is that? It I, is that. Yes. I heard it's awesome. Which I will be getting that soon. Yeah, I yes, heard that. So I will awesome. be getting. I know that. you're a Crash guy too. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, throwback. Of yeah, course. yeah, it's fun. But um, I don't I don't understand the 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 premise of watching somebody play a fucking video game. Feel Unless I'm trying to get to a next board and you could show me how to get there. That's, uh, that's uh, different. But you, I'm not going to watch you I'll, play. I'll, the three reasons why my people mainly watch Twitch based on what I've seen are through, are are to either help you progress in the game, to, to to watch the pros do it and see how you could like do how you could beat the game, um to practice speed running. 
because mainly people on Twitch speed run, and you need a lot of practice and what you need to watch a lot of people do it to get good at speed running. And the third one is um because you enjoy their content, which I don't get. Th- I, I I don't understand it. People watch it like because they generally love the person and and, and their content. I don't I don't, uh, but. I understand, like you said, if you want to beat a level or if you want to like help speed. Speed running is really important in Twitch because you need a lot of practice for that. It's no joke, and uh, people usually go on there and show their shit. Uh, but the money's there, dude. Do you see Ninja? That dude, the dude Ninja. No, I get it, but it's that's, unbelievable. The, but the, his thing is different because all that is battle royale it's, kind of shit. It's uh, yeah. but a lot of these wrestlers are doing. Now let's go back. Let's go to where the main conversation is unionizing. Okay, I'm part of a union, right? Sure. I'm a city employee and I'm I'm part of a union. And yes, like Marco spoke about, which is the health benefits is there. Yeah. You know? Uh depending on the the the, the medical uh coverages that are there. Sometimes I, I, I yeah, I could go to fucking um to my appointments or whatever, and not pay shit. Right. I could I get my prescriptions and not pay shit. Yep. Whatever. Um, also, there's a security, there's job security. I I could be doing dumb shit, and my union reps can fight for me like lawyers and say, "Well, what he did was justified." That's job protection. Right. You know how much, how long, and how you know how severe it is for you to do something incredibly dumb for you to get fired under a union. You must be doing some real bad. You dark have to shit. do some horrible shit. For you to get fired under a union, well, like, 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 how, like, like, what, 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 what's, what, 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 Maybe. Well, he's justified because that was under his religion, and oh, he, you God. might keep your job. Wow. No, I know. Did you satanic rituals? Yeah, that, oh, and that's right. the, that's the benefits for me that you, you're you're universally covered for ridiculous shit, <laughs> but also you pay your dues to be covered for it. You get a, a monthly payment or whatever. As for wrestlers. This is necessary to them, especially when it comes for health. This is what their main issue is: is health, safety, yeah, and 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 medical coverage. That's yeah, what they yeah, that's want. the main thing, dude. Yeah, that's well, that, 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 that goes back to CM Punk story, the Bryback story. Like, bro, why, I'm getting hurt here. What the fuck are we doing? Where's my health care, pa? Do you think these we're watching this football on the on the screen right now? Do you think these motherfuckers would play football right now without fucking health coverage? Hell to the no. Hell no. Hell no. If I get a concussion, guess the only thing that the no NFL way. unions were fighting for uh, recently, the unions were fighting for the repercussions of football and afterwards because of CTE and such like that, which needs to be fucking monitored. It does for wrestling as well. It does. Chris, my was a good point of that. Tom Rocker Tabloid, who's this? What's up, it's Jaden. JD, what up, boy? What up? What's up? You're a union man, so talk to me, boy. Um, well, like, my union is different than normal unions because it's rail, railroad, so it's freaking, you know, we're not allowed to strike and do all that other crazy shit that, you know, regular unions can do. Right. But what we do is, like, our union, it's like any other union, you know, you're, you're paid to do a job. We sign a contract every three years, and then we'll work without a contract while they negotiate a new contract. Mm. Because you know, they, they just can't hire some Joe Smo off the street to come do what we do because you got to take classes, federal certifications, and all that crap. Right. You, can, you can't have scabs at your job. Yeah, yeah, we cannot. You can't. We're not, it, takes, it takes literally an act of God for us to even think about striking well that's, that's what I'm saying that's a stronghold that you have on it because your 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 job is a skill job yeah right. pretty much right but like I said when we do it like Amtrak they pay help they you know we, we work for the union Amtrak contracts the unions but like all our health benefits and everything come through Amtrak not through the union but what's the what's the hiccup of it though? What 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 what's when you're part of a union? What's the what's the down or the, the downside of it? Uh, it all depends on like you like mine. I don't really see a downside where I'm at because, like I said, one you know the company guarantees you forty hours a week, 
You know, overtime is out the ass if you want it. This guy. And it, you know, like from from a wrestler standpoint, like you got, let's say you got a guy like Roman Reigns, who he's a, he's your WWE champion. Mm. And now if you're unionized and they say, yeah, he can go wrestle wherever the fuck he wants because, you know, it's his job that, you know, our union says he's allowed to do that. So now he's your champion. WWE has storylines for the next six months planned out for him. But he goes to wrestle Joe Schmo at the bingo hall and, you know, tears his ACL there. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? No, I, I, I get what that part is. All right. So this is this is what I was gonna to talk to uh, with, with Oski about it because like I said he's he he he's not into the whole thing. There young are certain it, no no it's not young buck but it's also about um you're about to get into the workforce so yeah, you gotta yeah. learn about it because yeah. your 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 degrees in like hospitality and all that mm-hmm. and they have unions and or whatever. Every union has different things like JD's a union is specialized right because. It's basically you. You you have that position where you could stranglehold their company because you're not going to bring in motherfuckers that do what I do, right? Yep. Because we do what it is, and we could bitch about whatever case he want, but their argument whenever they go to to the tables for anything is like, all right, um, I want five uh, percent of whatever the case may be. And you could you could debate that, you, but you're not gonna lose the employees for it. You're uh-huh. not. Right. But when it comes to the table, like what he's talking about, let's say with main eventers or the case may be independent contractors, the point is, when it comes to at least like you mentioned the Roman Reigns and stuff, WWE has to come to the realization either you're going to make them full staff employees under contract. Where they can't go anywhere else, or you leave them as the independent to where they can float around, but still hold their obligations to their commitments to the program. There's no hearsay or with that. AEW so far has been able, any and NWA has been able, all these guys have been able to do whatever it is that they do because they know at the end of the day they're floating champions, floating wrestlers, whatever the case may be. But their first and wrestlers have committed to it. Their first obligations is to the promotion that has been promoting them. Right. So now, that, yeah. that, that, so that so that's their, like so, so, that, so, that's, so that's their exclusivity, like based on how they are treated, like and how they feel like they where they are treated the best. But no, no. But go ahead, JD. What is? It? Yeah. Now you got to think if they unionize, you know, when you work for a union, the only way to get paid more money is to get promoted. Right. Other than that, everyone makes the same money across the board. Right. So now imagine Roman Reigns making the same amount of money as Dominic Mysterio. Right, so what? What so we were talking about? You're we, have that issue, right? We were talking about now before. You're, now you're unionized. You got to go off your union contract, which says you make this much per event, no matter what you do. You know what I mean? Which they I can't say, think. "Well, since you've been doing it for forty more years, we're going to pay you a hundred grand, but you walk in the door making twenty five. Right. You know what I mean? Then because that's when money starts playing a problem. So now these guys' pockets will be hurt when they unionize, if they unionize. And and this and this is what I'm and this is what I mentioned earlier is because now universally it becomes a whole day like I said it becomes like fucking um um, um Marxism where right. everybody's fucking equal equal with pay and that's not gonna happen and like I said especially it's not, not gonna happen especially not the wrestling business no way but the, Roman, Reigns, Roman Reigns is not making the same amount of money as Chad Gable sorry that's not right. happening but but yeah, this is, but, but the the loophole is that because WWE puts these guys under contract. But you're not protecting them. You're really not. You're not protecting them under not their contract. Clearly, not at all. You're not. So, for you to sit there and say that they can't do anything outside of what you're doing underneath WWE is 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 a is a travesty of, uh, of their of their fucking uh, of their work ethic. You can't do that. JD, you had said before. Yeah, you're right. You had said we 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 had you had we had this we had this conversation before to where like we had said, look, if you're under the gimmick, we get it. 
WWE gave you the gimmick. So, yeah. granted, it's it's their it's Character. under their power to, and it's under their power to do what they want. Yeah. But if Paige, who what she did, says, "Yo, I'm under my fucking my personal name." Yeah. Even Kofi AJ changed Stout. His, even Kofi changed his personal name on cameo. AJ is AJ. If AJ right now said, "I'm not doing this shit," fuck you. If you don't want, if you're not gonna do, if, if you're gonna put me under this policy, I'm leaving. What the fuck is up there? gonna do nothing. They'll, they'll, yeah. They would fucking cave. What are you gonna do? Like you said, you also got, you also got, like you said, nobody knows what a WWE contract looks like. To say, you know, all right, yes, they can. No, they can't. You know, like I know Alexa Bliss had her shit under her real name, but under that it said WWE Superstar. Right. So, you know, you're, right now you're promoting your job because maybe nobody knows Lexi Kaufman, but everyone knows what the WWE is. Do you really do you really think it's is because of the gimmick? Do you think it's because of the appearance or or, or it's just the person the person that's putting it over? I, I think it's I, like, it's like you said earlier, it just makes you look like, you know, you know hey, I'll say hi to you for $400. Like, bitch, you're making fucking three hundred k a year. Hell you yeah, really that shit need pisses that $400 me off. To say hello to somebody? Alexa Bliss charged $400 for a hello. Bitch, I don't yeah, need a hello you know, from you. I'm good. She, she, she's, making, she's making six figures. I don't no, care no, what but he, Roman, Roman was doing the same shit on Cameo. He's the, probably the highest paid Fucking superstar, superstar in Besides WWE right now, and he was he had like it was like six hundred dollars or five fifty for a cameo. It was like, dude, but it makes you look like Virgil. It makes, it makes the the, the, yeah. the company look like shit. But like, why are you charging yeah. that much? Yeah, it's a lot of money. It's Where, ridiculous. No, no, you, might well go, you might as well go hang out at the garden and sign autographs for twenty dollars a pop. So in a hole, uh, before I let you go, JD. Um, I, I, I not uh, not to blanket it because it's 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 tough to blanket it because different companies, different wrestlers, whatever the case may be. But for WWE in the whole, rather than unionize, what should be the the proper way to deal with how their status with the company is? Because there has to be one thing over another. Well, I want to say their biggest thing is the guys that don't get paid when they don't work if they have that type of contract. They need to guarantee guarantee those guys some type of money. Like, all right, when you work, you're gonna get, you know, your your pay scale is gonna jump up to this. But when you're not working, this is what you're gonna make. You know what I mean? Right. So they gotta, you know, guys gotta get guaranteed some sort of money. And like I know they, you know, they have their health care professionals, but you know that's gotta come out of, you know, if whether you know WWE is like, hey, we're gonna eat half the cost, you're gonna eat half the cost. You know what I mean? If they, if they, if to they that put, extent. yeah, if they put, like I said, if there's something where they get garnished, whatever the case, in a pot for whatever the case of their benefits or such. It's part of the 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 the, the protocol of being a wrestler where you have to have some kind of coverage. It, it's a it's a different day these days. It, it's yeah, a different it era. It's a different era. But JD, thanks for calling in and been wanting to call in for the longest, bro. And um, <laughs> have a good one, sir. All right, man. Later. Later. My 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 whole thing is this. Look, um, I always look out before we close it out. I always look out for the benefits health wise for the wrestlers. That's all I really care. Yeah, about. Yeah, because like you said, it, with football, CTE is there, but it should be. It's also here in wrestling. Um, did we not see Chris Benoit's story? Shit. I mean, honestly, it's 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 a roundabout. And, yeah. uh, um, as much as people say wrestling is staged, I'm not out going out there busting my ass without some health insurance. Right. Uh, period. For uh, years. Uh, when it came to traveling, that was part of wrestling. Yeah, from pay, the NWA, yeah. AEW. You gotta pay your way. AWA. I'm talking about uh, uh, um, um, WCW, WCCW. You paid your own way, yeah. and you made it up in the back end Which, because yeah. of of the money you made and, and what you made with them. Even merchandise is like these guys aren't blessed. No, not really. Well, New Day's the only company. But I'm talking, about, I'm talking about back then. It's like oh, back then. these guys made it and it was covered for it. Yeah. They did it, whatever. But when it comes to this new age way of making money, yeah. this is their way of their merchandise. This is their merchandise. Yeah. This is their merch table. Yeah, it is. And they're taking And them. why are you going to fucking sit there and mob them and be like, yeah, I'm going to take your merch table, but now that I got your merch table, I'm going to give you a cut of what you're getting. 
but what kind of but, but what why? kind of fucking um, but why John Gotti shit is this? I just don't understand why it affects or bothers them. Yeah, what's your overhead from it? Nothing. Because basically, the saying is like you're not doing any anything for them. Do you think it's a thing because do you think it's um do you think it's a way of Vince telling them that they they that they can't make money elsewhere and that they need me sort of thing like yes oh, yeah, I yeah, think uh, it's that uh, and like, but uh, I think it's foolish because it is too because regardless if of what Paige you say, is making forty five thousand a month a month and she hasn't been on TV since ever I mean I mean a year and still doing it yeah. How much money, bro? She sits there and, re- and reacts to wrestling shows, and she gets bur- so many do- donations. So much, so many donations. I mean, she's living. She literally said, "Oh, thanks for taking away most of my income, dickheads." Like, I, I, I and I appreciate everybody for doing it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. It, it, it's like, rough. Even AJ, uh, Miro, all these fucking guys, they sit there and it's like, "All right, I appreciate that you put me on, but yeah. I don't, I don't need you anymore." Yeah. Because the. The landscape and the way uh, uh, wrestling fans and video gamers and all that uh, click now—it's different. It's different. It's different. And like having Nash said, "Am I like I, said, then, I would shit. never pay. I, I would never pay for this shit." Yeah, no. But back then we were shaking pills. Now we're playing video games. Like Kevin Nash once You said. mad boy <laughs> <laughs> You mad Cause you're not doing it boy <laughs> yeah. I just For me it's just Why hate the hustle Why try to prove a point That we need you At the end of the day Vince um, A page in me, A page Does not need you anymore yeah, She's at her own What entity. you should've did It was just like Just as you made a tout Yeah And you did all that shit Make your own You should've shit. made a fucking WWE page Where they all went under That one yeah, thing call it um Grapple. <laughs> yeah, I'm going on grapple. Yeah, that was I'm a good. That was a grapple. I'm trying. I'm trying out here. Or uh, oh, oh, WWE's pure battle royal or royal rumble or whatever the fuck. Something that and, and put everybody under that bro. But you you jumped on it late. Yep. And 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 it, to me it sounds like Vince is just mad mad. Does this stop? Extra bread. Does this stop any future talent who are into video games from signing to WWE? Hundred percent. You think so? Hundred percent. There is no way you're telling me a guy like TJP who who lives off video games on his side on his side shit gonna join the company who tells you not to stream video games anymore. It's a side hustle, and as much as people downplay streaming, any like uh, it's a big deal. People have quit full time jobs, Red, to stream full time. To stream, and yeah. They make more money than they were working full time. And, and and it's not even what it's people. It's crazy. It's not even. What people donate, no, it all could be about ads. ads and all that. Yeah, it, it, bro, it, if you're successful, tick, um, Twitch throws you so many ads. You're making double the amount of bread you were making at a I was listening job, to bro. fucking Cornette this week, and when fucking um Brian Last told Cornette the money that fucking streamers was making. He was like, what? Yeah. He, he lost his shit. And think about it. All you do is play your favorite video game. Exactly. And communicate with people. And like communicate with an audience. That's yeah. it. It's amazing. The world has changed. I need to find a fucking goofy ass game. I need to play like Pac-Man on Atari. You should, you should, you and should, see if people will fucking you should play, play on it. You should, you should do like a... Uh, um, you should host like Fall Guy drinking nights. And it's like every Everybody's time, so every, every time stupid, he falls... Yeah, every, every time I die, we all got to take a drink together. People do like, yo... It's about being interactive with your fan base, and it's about being different. Uh, like I said, like people, um, um, speedrunners, um, the game's changed, and that's why re- that's why the wrestlers when during COVID and all that when they weren't wrestling every day because no live events, they're working one day a week. What else are they doing throughout the week? And it ma- and like I said, it makes Adam d- Cole gamer, Samoa Joe gamer, Cesaro is even a fucking gamer. Yeah. Everybody on that roster plays video games. Randy Orton brings a Switch and a PlayStation on the fucking plane. And the best Randy thing, Orton, he and made that, fun and of that's them. the big and Seth Rollins gamer. Yeah, gamer. All and that, of them. And that's the thing all that, them. that and the female wrestler Selena, gamer. Uh, fucking um, uh, 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 Selena uh, Vega, Selena, Mortal Kombat gamer. lover, gamer. Uh, 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 um, what, what Oscar, the fuck? Uh, gamer. Um, no, um, uh, Amber Moon, uh, Amber Moon, gamer. gamer. All of them. Oscar's uh, it's fucking. She's been paid for like yeah. five years with YouTube channel is booming. Even Randy Orton once said he goes, "Yo, I used to make fun of these geeks playing games. Now I'm playing Mario and Call of Duty on my damn PlayStation on the way back." Big Show is sponsored by Destiny Two. <laughs> Do you understand? I want to. I want to say this one more time for people, everyone at home, to hear that. Big Show, the Big Show is sponsored by Bungie's Destiny. That's a video game, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's crazy, right? That's nuts. So yeah, so guys, and you're listen, gonna take that away from them. Listen, fuck you. They, they, you, fuck you. You don't. I got me heated. Bro. Do not be surprised if a lot of these motherfuckers say, 
I'm gone and walk I'm away. Out. Adam Cole, gamer. Yeah, gamer. Uh, he, he, um, Roger Strong's a gamer. The list goes on and on. Every Gargano's a huge gamer. Candice LeRae loves video games. Every like, sorry to say, it, video games have taken over, especially during COVID. What else are we doing? Uh, and now because they want to make a little side money, or it's, and even Paige said it. She goes, "Yeah, the money's important, but." I just enjoy spending every night hanging out with people and talking and hanging out with fans and shit. That's so, what so Miro does. He like sit down and just chat it up. But you're going to take that away from me? That's like you and me having a podcast. and, and uh, no, that, that, That's like me working for the company I do now and I'd make a side like um, candy bar store. And they're like, we're, giving, we're taking your candy bars like this and it's bullshit. I am, I am pro... Hater Central. I am pro unionizing wrestling. I agree too. And... But they need, they need that shit. What JD had mentioned is there's, there's a certain level of how to do it because of you know names and the, the names and, and also tiers of your 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 stature. Yeah, but, but when it comes to stuff like um outside properties fuck? and medical stuff and yeah. Come on, this is a no-brainer. But even Kofi Kingston said he changed his name on camera to his government and he still got kicked off. Like that's bullshit. Oh, you know, you know, you know, you know what he changed his name to? You know who I am. <laughs> yeah, I swear to God, yeah, I was, you know who I am. And yeah. Oh, you gotta see the look, <laughs> the, the, the picture, and it's like you know who and I that, am. That might fuck him over because WWE be like, yo, I gave you that face. Right. That's right. Oh, jeez. So, um, guys, uh, what's your thoughts about unionizing wrestling? We're gonna put it up as a post on the on the group page and the and all things that's on on, on social media. So, guys, go on Instagram. We have, of course, our creme de la creme, our main event. Wrestling run out coming up as well as around the square circle. So, guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a sec. What's going on, everybody? As you know, this is Matt Olski from Turnbuckle Tabloid. But when I'm not here talking wrestling, uh, I have another hobby, which is collecting Funko Pops. So, uh, if any of you guys want to check out my new page, The Funko Hub, on Instagram, we promote Instagram lives, sales, raffles. And just talk about anything Funko related, uh, what you're collecting, what I'm collecting, and supporting the community at its finest. So, guys, check out the Funko Hub on Instagram uh, for all your Funko needs and uh, to support the Funko community together. This is Daniel Garcia, and you're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of Turnbuckle Tabloid. This is... Wrestling Rundown. I think we hit our stride with these mics. I think this is it. I think this is gonna. Have, this is actually gonna work. Yeah, th- this this sounds much much better. Hell yeah, we're swinging, boy. We're yeah, swinging for the fences. Much better. Downloads are going crazy in streams. Like I'm just, I, I saw the numbers and shit, and I'm like, wow. This Good. new this new um this new podcast website that we use is fucking doing wonders for us. So. Like I said, shout out to all those guys. I mentioned it earlier. Shout out to everybody who's listening in Belgium, India, um, in, in, in England, all you guys in China. Thank, thank you guys for showing us love, man. So uh, as a, well, I, I'll, I'll learn how to say thank you in different languages whatever, for one day or another. We'll figure it out one day. We'll figure or we'll it out one day. We'll use a translator app or some shit and just say it, like put the Google sound or whatever on exactly. it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Isn't that in your, out, your update for your phone? Yeah, it's like, thank you. <laughs> Whatever the fuck it is, I'm not gonna butcher your shit, but you know, we'll, we'll we'll find a way to butcher it anyway. That's what the fuck we do over here, anyway. Right. Yeah, but um, as always, I am the Howard Stern of this segment to the Robin Ophelia Quivers Oski. So Oski, take it away. All right, guys, we have some news, and um, uh, goddamn, can't wait to tell you about this one because it has been revealed that Samantha Tavell, known also. Was Candy Cartwright has filed a civil lawsuit against Matt Riddle, WWE, and former Evolve owner Gabe Sabolski, according to court documents acquired by Fightful. 
she is, a, she is seeking $10 million from each defendant for actual damages, damages from emotional distress, punitive damages, attorney's fees, and costs. Red, what the fuck? This, bit, this girl's crazy. Son. Why the fuck would she say attorney fees and stuff? You're the one who brought the case up. Why yep. should somebody else pay for your case? You're yeah, bringing it up. You gotta pay for that shit. Yeah, that shit doesn't make any sense. I don't look. I don't know what the fuck happened, but apparently, from both sides of the of this story, it looks like on the surface, it just looked like a scorned woman who just is upset that they just stopped fucking with her. That's the way. Because I, even when the early stories came out, it was like he forced me. To give him oral To you know to, to give him a BJ But All the people in the car She said was sleeping But the, the mathematics Would say even the driver Was fucking sleeping Didn't make any sense And then yeah, You have no to start that one. But then you're also Telling the world That he cheated on his wife With you And you guys were in a relationship Behind his wife's back So What the fuck is the case There is no case That doesn't make any mad. sense Yeah exactly She's mad mad She's She's mad, mad, and now I think because she tried getting him in trouble and just found out what what it was. I don't think no one. I don't. I don't think the bookings are looking good for her. I don't think what well, whatever the fuck it is. I think she's just mad, mad, and and I'm sorry, but you trying to sue the, the big E? It's like yeah, you getting for you. You ain't winning dog shit. She, man. you know what she's looking for? Hush money. That's all yes, it is. Yes, she wants. Yes, she's looking for that extra check. She'll crazy. say she'll ask for ten million. WWE will say here's a hundred thousand and shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly. And which, looking for that, and which, that good check you can't with get lawyers more. fees and all that, all you're gonna get is about twenty thousand. So wow, yeah. So good luck with exactly. that. Oh, it, duck it, quack, quack. Next up. Up next, it was reported in San Antonio this week that Alberto Del Rio has been formally <laughs> indicted on charges of kidnapping and assault. Uh, um, Del Rio um, was arrested Matt, back Matt, in May. Matt. Matt, the word is, the word is indicted. Oh, <laughs> I'm reading it and it says CT. So like, I know, but it's pronounced indicted. I mean, you would think it was indicted. I'm sorry, he has been formally indicted on charges of kidnapping and assault. Del Rio was arrested back in. He said he assaulted her on multiple occasions. Um. May 3rd, there was a tape of Del Rio threatening to take the woman's son and drop him in the middle of the road somewhere. Mm. Um, if Del Rio is co- is convicted, that's the right word, okay? He's faced up to 20 years in prison. Red, where, what does the future hold in um, the crystal ball of Alberto Del Rio? If this all is true, if all the allegations are true, he's fucked. 20 years, bro. Easy. Easy. Wow, really? He's fucked. It, it, it's shit. They, they, they're not gonna play no games with him, dude. Really? And then, then you're not a citizen. You're on a work. You're possibly on a work visa here. You're oh, we've worse. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that is. That Let guy. me just check quick because I believe that he's not. He, he he's not from here. So, yeah. yeah. He's, uh, he's he's fucked. Fucked. He's fuck fucked. <laughs> he's done, he's donezo, donezo, so But he, I mean. but the other thing too is that he's an entitled prick. Like he he come he comes from family that you know they've been in the business for years. It's money and and you know he thinks that he oh yeah he's he's born in Mexico so <laughs> yeah you're here on a fucking work visa what please he's lucky he's they don't dumb. fucking extradite his extradite his ass out of the fucking country. But like no yeah. no so you can't work here no more. But yeah. No, I I don't see a I don't see a bright future for my man Alberto, man. I said he better be ready to wear a lucha mask in prison. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there's gonna be like a ball gag and shit or something over his mouth. Cause... Wow, that's bananas. That's bananas. So we'll see the future of Alberto Del Rio and um, wow. Just stupid idiot. What else we got? WWE announces new performance center recruits as we have uh. Brandy um, Pawlik, which um, her name in the indies was Brandy Lauren. Um, she was a, a wrestler in Evolve. Um, Cam- Cameron Rogers, who's a six foot one Texan who competes under the name as Kurt Stallion. Um, Sounds like a porn out- name. I know exactly. He broke out in Evolve in 2019, where he wrestled the, r- the likes of Matt Riddle and Cameron Grimes. Anthony Green, who is a, f- a flamboyant native and a, and a standout grappler from Evolve. Um, actually, um, 
he he faced Tyler Breeze at one at one time in uh, Evolve. Uh, Leon Ruff was officially signed, which Leon Ruff was on AEW for multiple times. So I guess NXT took them quick. Uh, Joseph Ruby, um, which we all know is Joe Gacy. Ah, that's our guy. Pa -pum, pa -pum. Pa -pum, oh, I'm gonna pa -pum. that song though. Yeah, I know, right? My friend that song. is my enemy. He's all my yeah, we gotta play that uh, shit Joe one Gacy, more time. Uh, much deserved, man. And, and listen, I'm giving, I'm showing everyone love in this group, but I gotta give the most to Joseph Ruby. Um, what a little terrible last name. Um, I'm Joe just mad Gacy. We, we never got him for the fucking show. We we had him, but we couldn't. Pull we him had in. him. We reeled him, but you know, shit happens. And uh, he he is uh, a new recruit for NXT. Very happy to see. Also, is Joe um, Joshua Bruns, um, who has been the Evolved Champion and actually battled Walter Riddle, Morrison, and Angelo Dawkins before. And finally, the two members, which is Jake Clemens, who's a referee, and uh, Jacob Casper, who is um, a two-time NCAA All-American and won the 2018 ACC Heavyweight Championship. Um, no news here, because I don't know most of them, but just wanted to give them a shout-out for being um, the newest recruits in NXT. R appreciate all yeah. Yeah, they just, they, just, they just pretty much swallowed up that whole Evolve fucking roster, yes, didn't they? Yes, did, as well as they should. Uh, before we transition to the next story, I just gotta play. The, I gotta play his song into the next one. So do it. Even though I can't hear it. Uh, I gotta find a way to do that where you can listen to it on the other side. Yeah. I'll let you know when it goes. Yep. When the part kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> gonna miss that shout out joe gacy so uh what the hell happened there yeah, i don't know what happened uh, so next story next story as uh braun Strowman uploaded a picture to his instagram this week showing his fitness progress but fans were quick to point out that there was a syringe needle laying on his counter um completely visible in the photo wait a minute who wait, 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 the photo, but wait, wait, wait. what wait wait I, I, i'm sorry repeat that again Braun Strowman posted a picture on Instagram of him in his bathroom, and clear on his sink was a syringe needle. Oh. Uh, Strowman, Strowman then deleted the photo, but then explained that it wasn't what the fans thought it was. He said, for everyone trying to make a big deal out of it, I take B12 shots every day because my body is super sensitive to caffeine, and I can only use so much without it feeling like I'm having heart palpitations. So thank you. Um, and after that, he posted a video of him actually taking a B12 shot just to prove further bullshit that he takes B12 shots. Red, this bro, uh, you know, nothing. I don't really need a comment there, but um, is it really a smart idea um, posting a picture with that kind of shit around? <laughs> Listen, um, no, um, look, at the end of the day, look at the fucking guy. <laughs> look at him. Hilarious. Does he? Does he? Does he not look? I mean, come on. Would you? Would you look at him? And, and I, I, there's no way that man takes steroids. Come on, look at him. He's not he's, a chance in hell. There's not a chance in hell a beefy beef monger like him, who who looks like he could fucking body slam steer, could fucking be taking steroids. No way. Come on. What is wrong with the internet? The internet is so fucking biased. Come on. Really. Oh. B12 <laughs> shots, man. Come on, it's good for the body. B12 shots. B12. Nah, it could be. It's plausible. That could be. That could be true. He probably probably has a deficiency or whatever. Yeah, yeah, at least he didn't do the cop. I always say like it's insulin and be like, yo, I got I got asthma. I mean, I got um diabetes and shit. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But I just found that funny as people automatically assume the worst. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. You fucking. It's fun. I, but why delete it though? What? Why delete the picture? I guess he didn't want to be further comments. So I don't know. Hmm. You are don't know, fired. don't know why, but interesting. What's up? Next one. Uh, Vince McMahon told Chris Jericho years ago that nobody gives a fuck about the Intercontinental Champion and that nobody gives a fuck about Fandango. Um, in a recent interview, 
Chris Jericho. Um, he spoke about not wanting to face Van Damme. Man revealed how he feels about uh, about, about why he needed to. Um, Chris Jericho said, "Why not? He, why not he face Wade Barry?" Um, and Vince McMahon said, "Well, nobody cares about the fucking Intercontinental Championship, and they don't." Uh, <laughs> wait, no, sorry. This is a back and forth exchange. So this is funny. Um, so Jericho told told Vince McMahon that to, that he wanted to face Wade Barrett. He said, "I'm a nine time IC champion. I could go for my tenth victory and uh, become a tenth IC champion." And Vince said, "Well, nobody gives a fuck about the IC belt." And then Jericho said back, well, they don't care about Fandango either. And Vince says, well, that's your job to make them care. And Jericho said back, so I, so I can't change your mind? And Vince goes, no. Uh, and then Jericho hung up on him. He said, I hung up on my billionaire boss because I wasn't happy with what he wanted me to do. Um, what do you thought about that altercation? Alter, uh, that I believe it's true. I, I, I believe it's true because one thing that Jericho has been telling is is these stories and not having to give a fuck like if there's any rhyme, rhyme or reason for it. I believe it is, and I believe that Vince does have these fucking um, misconstrued ideas exactly. of what the fans it's a think about. Funny story. Yeah, I think he does have some misconstrued ideas of what the fuck the um, the fans so are. Into the... What's that? Right. Uh, also, Chris Jericho went off to say that the worst the, the worst wrestling match in all time was of all time was the Brothers of Destruction versus DX of, in Saudi Arabia. You sure? Because did you not watch the tag team match that happened on Dynamite this past week? <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> it was equally Jericho, worse. Jericho, here's a hint: you might have been involved in the worst tag team, in the worst match in fucking wrestling history. Yeah, yeah, seriously, honestly, it, 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 last person be talking shit, but you know what they say: uh, nothing. So. Y2J is telling you, if you can't say something entertaining, then shut the hell up. <laughs> what else you got? Um, I'm, I'm done on my end. Oh, okay, so just a quick rundown of what I have over here. Uh, Sarah Stock, who was recently released as a trainer from WWE, uh, was arrested for drunkenness and assault at a Florida bar. Whoa. Oh, no. Feisty little lady, oh, aren't we? No. Apparently, she had kicked a woman in the gut. <laughs> oh, no. No. Uh, oh, no. Marty Janetti was jumped outside of JFK Airport. Apparently, the, yeah, I saw, I heard about that shit. Was taken to a Jamaica hospital, a local facility here in New York City, and was talking about that his phone was stolen, but yet was able to tweet and fucking share his story on Facebook. Like, how the fuck did you do that? Yo, I want him to go on the Maury show and get under a lie detector test because he's fucking lying about everything lately. Yeah, he's he, he's also claimed to say that he did murder that person and he burned their body or some shit. Wait, he went back on his word again? Yes, he what went back fuck? again. He back what again. the fuck? Yo, he has he changes his story more times than Big Show turned heel. What the fuck? This bro, dude got bro. so much fucking problems, bro. We, we, Yo, he has. Uh, I feel like I feel like he took that breakup with Sean a little too hard. Yeah, right. But, <laughs> like, and to think, Sean was Sean was considered the pain in the ass, wild fucking uh, pill popper. This fucking guy got him beat tenfold, like crazy. Man, big. Time. Uh, and finally, oh, and finally, Jeez. and unfortunately, uh, we have to share the news that um, the the driver of the truck in which struck and killed our our people, Matt Travis, is released and is on the streets on a two hundred fifty dollar fine, and just most likely is having his license revoked and suspended. Um, it. The, the final charges will be probably be sentenced and delivered on the seventh on December fourth of this year. So. Once again, an unfortunate event where a young man was killed and nothing is going to be done about it. No justice. No justice. So uh, that'll tie up my end over here on my wrestling news. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, guys, when we come yeah, back. Me too. Me too. Uh, guys, when we come back, we have a round square circle. We'll be discussing, of course, our review of NXT TakeOver 31, as well as the ups and downs of wrestling. We had Raw. We have the beginning of the draft on SmackDown. We have NXT, and we have possibly the worst match that we've ever seen, not only in AEW Dynamite, but probably in fucking wrestling history. So, guys, don't go nowhere. Stick around. We will return. Check you guys in a second. Hey guys, if you are an up and coming artist and you want to share your talents with the world, you know, here at Termical Tabloid, we love playing people's music. We do it for 
anyone who has talent and is inspired to just share their love for music and their passion here at Temporal Tavoli. Although we're a wrestling show, we do enjoy our music. Oski and I are aficionados and connoisseurs of good music. So if you want to play your music on Temporal Tabloid, Make sure you check us out at Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. And you just check out our tiers and just give us some love. And we'll show you love by playing your music to the masses who listen to us here at our little goofy podcast. So if you're a big musician and you just want to share it to the masses, check out our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. And, um... One hand washes the other, and we'll make sure that people hear your talents. Another week of Around the Square Circle, and after I did my reviews and watched what it was that I watched this week, I said, I said to myself, what the fuck is going on in wrestling these days, honestly? I don't know, what the fuck is worse, politics or fucking wrestling? I'm going to go with politics. Really? I mean, I don't think it was that bad of a week. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, we'll talk about it, but I mean, the draft was last night, uh, part one. Uh, we had NXT Takeover, which I thought was a really strong show. Those are the uh, two. That, that was the one high po- point that I had for the week. AW was an absolute um, clout show. Oh bullshit, my but we'll get to God. that in a minute. Even though, even though Chris Jericho was talking shit about a five star match, but sure. Uh, okay, Jericho wants to talk shit about Kyle O'Reilly and uh, and Finn Balor's match, and it's like. Wow, you're mad they really made a... F- you're, you're mad they had a great show? Wow, you mad mad. Okay. Um, uh, that they NXT? actually had a wrestling fucking match, not that fucking travesty that was the main event on, on Dynamite? Sorry, Jericho, that we don't make every single person on our roster look good. I, 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 like, you make Luth- you made Luther sound like a... You made Luther, like, you attempted to make Luther scratch that. You attempted to make Luther look good this week. Leave the- and, yeah, that was the biggest flop of all time. So, uh, We'll talk about it in a wrestling rundown, but this is just like the guy, Jericho has no clue. Um, I think his contract states that he must suck everything AEW does his dick <laughs> and hate on everyone else because I think Kyle Riley and Finn Balor was an absolute gem. Yes, and it was two gentlemen who actually went in the ring and took their wrestling match as a battle, as a fight, not as oh, a Oh, they took fuck- it serious? God forbid, right? Yeah, wow. God forbid they took no, a wrestling match there, serious. There was no there was no um mimosa um pool, no? No. There was no there was no fucking 30 year celebration during the match, really? No. The, the, the only positive of AEW this week which uh we'll, we'll, we'll get into the to the week in a, in a minute was the fact that we had cameos from Slash and Paul Stanley and fucking the, and musicians I love and adore. Um that was it. <laughs> so if anyone wants a spoiler on AEW this week, that's what I cared about. The cameos of people fucking saying thank you to Jericho. Oh, that, that, that was it. Uh, basically, for anything else uh, during the week, what I listened to it, not really much. I didn't really, I wasn't really into what was going on on the podcasting circuit. Of course, I listened to Cornette and shit like that. But uh, yep. as for and basically the, the the dial was really on on zero. I just watched the regular stuff that they had on what culture and cultaholics and uh uh pretty much there was nothing really that stood out for me. Even even the news was like eh, this week. So but Yeah, we, we tried we tried lingering the news and uh because like you know, we want to give you guys the most uh up to date news we can. And it was just it was just a it was a light it was a light news week. You know, uh, which you know, you can't. It's not our fault. It's just there was nothing much to talk about. There is some, but uh, the one thing I do suggest you check out Red this week if you want to look back at it. Chris Van Vliet did a few interviews this week with uh, Dominic Mysterio, Jazz. Which, by the way, um, Jazz officially announced her retirement. Right. Who knew she wasn't? Um, who knew she wasn't? But I guess she she was doing some Japan shit supposedly. Uh, 
But Dominic Mysterio, man, uh, I got to give him credit. He's my age. So I look at him and I'm like, wow, this kid, this kid. And, and by the way, for all you marks out there saying Dominic needs to train more. He, uh, he'll t- he tells you where he's been training for the past three years. And yeah, he does need to train more. And, and he has more work to do, as he admits. But he worked with. I want, I want to list a few names of people that he worked with, okay? He worked with, during his three years of training, he trained with Fennec, Phoenix, Conan, Lance Storm, Jay Lethal for five months, and a few other and a few other talents like Jay Briscoe, um, uh, Pentagon Jr., um, of course his father. Um, Dominic basically said he was on the road training in different parts of the country for three years, barely being home. He would, he would be home maybe... Hmm, maybe a few weekends, and he would stay in Canada, for example, with Lance Storm. He would stay in Mexico with Phoenix and Pentagon. Kid, kid busted his ass, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see anything that basically says that he doesn't have the skills. Like so far, he's shown that he's in the ring. I think it's because you know people are gonna be hating on him because basically, uh, you know, he hasn't paid his dues or earned his strikes. But that's not his fault that his father is who he is. I mean, what the fuck are you going? I mean, honestly. <laughs> He said that he said that in the interview. He goes, it, um, people gave me backlash that I had my first match against Seth Rollins. He goes, you do realize when I was told that I thought it was a joke, right? He goes, that's not my doing. He goes, I'm just working by the week. He goes, my. He goes, and to be honest, he has to think a lot. The only reason why he's on the main roster this early is because he said that Vince McMahon heard the storyline idea about Rollins and the Mysterio family, and Vince said it was genius. Oh, and, yeah, I mean, and, and 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 in order to make it genius, they they ha- they would have to skyrocket D- Dominic to the to the to the main roster instantly to make it work. And you have to trust he's, the fact that he's he's capable of pulling it off. It's not like you put a kid in their mix and he's a fucking schlub. The kid actually can fucking work. I mean, let's 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 put it in, let's put it in perspective. Like you said, three years training, he's been in, in the ring. Yeah, and he's in the ring with you know top notch guys. He's not doing fucking. Uh, uh, it, 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 he's not like a David Flair. Like, I mean, let's be honest. It's not like fucking no, Ric Flair. No, son he's not. He, he put the work in. He, he, he literally told. He, he, once he listed who he's trained with and how long he's been training, he's like, everyone thought I just became a wrestler like last year. He goes, I've been training since early 2017, mm. or uh, um, and I've barely been home because of it. He goes, I've been busting my ass. I don't know if you remember seeing a picture of him before he started wrestling, but that that dude was a chubby boy. Right. Oh, so and I'm now, and now you got to be honest. I mean, he looks great. He's he's my age also, so people need to give him time to get that facial hair pumping out. He need you know he needs to get that heelish beard to grow. Uh, give, give him a little time to given the marinate. given the magician's beard the the but, fucking. But, 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 but let me ask you this: magician's so goatee. At the end of the interview, he says that there, you know, of course, the the, the coronation of the mask, the handing over the mask, is in the in the family hygienes, and in Mexico, that's just what they do. It's important. It's a, it's a part of um, um, taking care of the family. He mentioned that he that um, him and Ray have discussed possibly making him when he passes the mask over Prince Mysterio. Mm. What do you think about that gimmick? I, I think it's I think, I think it's it's uh, tradition. I think that is something that's that I. You know, it, 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 you have to know the whole thing. I wish Marco would have been on for this, but it, it'll tell you the, the, the real honor it is to be crescent with a luchador mask. You know, there's, there's it's a certain... It's a, it is. A, it's a huge deal. And many times people wear that as a a badge of honor and also you have to live that gimmick. Like, these like these motherfuckers actually walk around in the streets. This for years people don't know what the fuck they look like. There was a... Um, yeah. Yep. There was the 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 these luchadors who went on for like forty or fifty years without revealing what they face looked like. So you yep. know it, it's yep. it's a it's, Ray, it's part of Ray them. Mysterio, Ray Mysterio to this day in WWE I don't think has ever unmasked. In, in WCW he did, which is a big mistake. Right. But in W in WWE I don't think he has. No, no, no. He's only been unmasked, but he's never like showed his face and, or and anything. They threw, like. And they threw the towel on his head instantly. Right. <laughs> like you know. Like, yeah, because uh, it's a it's a sign of disrespect, and they even have matches that's dedicated to it, especially when they do that uh, loser uh, loses their mask or a loser yep. uh, shaves their head kind of thing. Yeah. There there's 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 matches that are that that pertain to. Disgracing and losing the honor of wearing a lucha mask. So yeah, it is a is it a thing. For but as for him, I think we've gotten to a point right now where the mystique about what you look like underneath the mask is gone. Is more about 
handing down the tradition. Uh, yes, of and this. how you represent the, the the bloodline before you. Yeah, so I think I think that, that I, I, I think that'll work. I think that, that I think that's fine. And I, and also, you know, everyone loves King Ricochet. Prince Mysterio does not sound that bad either, man. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So uh, also in um in uh, weekly news, it's not it's not it's not wrestling rundown worthy, but I will say it's official that supposedly Mercedes Martinez and Mia Yim are being taken off retribution effective immediately. Thank and God. It's, and it's going to be it's going to be an all male group, and uh, Mia Yim will be called up and supposedly uh, making her debut on Raw this week as just Mia Yim. Thank God. What are your thoughts? Please, I mean, get them out little by little. I mean, honestly, peel yeah. them away little by. <laughs> You could have used, Mercedes but you see, but you could have used any other female. Honestly, like it, there's Chelsea Green. Yeah, Chelsea or, Green. or maybe not even Chelsea. You just use some other underling that's not necessarily being used right now. You could have used a performance center person or something like, and then build them up. You didn't yep. really have to use like a like a Yim or or Martinez or Green or somebody. Use use somebody that. Just want you, you just give him some time. You could the the, the, yeah. the female could get you know take some bumps. It could be like one of those dark order dudes and just take some bumps. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I think the reason why Mercedes is back in NXT is for two reasons. I think that she realized this is dead in the water. But I but I but I think the main reason was how old is she again? She's in her early forties, correct? Uh, late thirties. Yeah, late thirties. She wants to she wants to spend the last three years of her career with this. She knows that she's worth more. I think Triple H realized that. I think Triple H said. Let's give her one big giant run in NXT with this belt, and uh, and to be honest with you, the women's division needs it. So, I'm okay with it. Mia Yim is gonna go on Raw with her husband, with her hubby, uh, whatever it is, or he gets drafted to SmackDown, whatever. But uh, I'm happy that they're out of that, uh, that that uh, that cesspool. So, besides that, that's all. I, I mean, you know, before we get into the week, I just wanted that's all I listened to. Some interviews with Chris Van Vliet, and uh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, pretty much that was that was solidified on my end. Like I said, uh, just catching up on some um, on some top ten lists and shit like that. It, s- stuff that might be considered for future cutting up promos and such. So that's yeah. pretty much my my leg work for the week. So what do we got? Takeover thirty one. Yeah, let's do a quick uh, takeover thirty one uh, recap. Uh, we're not gonna go match by match, but just wanted to say it was an overall strong show. Uh, I think each match had something to to offer. Uh, I think it was uh, definitely memorable, uh, main event wise and opener wise. Uh, Red, what do you thought about the overall uh, overall night? I mean, I guess the show the show started off with Damian Priest and uh, Gargano, right? Opening open, uh, opening match, by the way, just overall uh, one of the better takeovers uh, we've seen in the past couple of months. Where months, I mean, the, it's a year. Yeah, a couple of the takeovers have been lackluster, haven't been the takeovers from previous years. Where the the talent tears it down, but I think this was it's, it, well. First of all, let's talk about the ambiance, the fucking environment, the way that they changed it up at the um, at the CWC. That's a um, that's a that's a nice venue. Uh, it's funny because yes. people always say that that NXT is always dark and gritty, and it's like yeah, they just went darker and grittier and shit. They just they took it to another level now. <laughs> they of put, course, because. Of course, because Triple H loves the metal bands. He loves Metallica. He loves going into like the. He even said he goes, "I want you to walk. I want you to look at this and go, wow, we're at a metal concert.' Yeah, and, and, and you're you're right. I call it the mini. I call it Thunder Thunderdome's baby. Well, and I, and I actually think that it's better because I like the way that they are the the panels up against the wall. Yeah, I like it better. You get more of a, fe- a sense of feeling there. The only thing, and it's not only just NXT. It's across the board when it comes to. The audio that shit is trash. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, it's like it it's it like they, they they need to stop piping in that audio. If you can't get a legit crowd in there or crowd don't reaction, give don't give me one. It's trash. Well, we'll we'll talk about it this week on SmackDown, but I don't know if you heard the 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 the, the Stephanie McMahon um, fillers of giving her a standing ovation, and then randomly just stops like a fucking like we do on the drops. oh yeah right. It's just it's just like <laughs> wait hold on. It'll just be like. <laughs> it just yeah, stops. No, and it stops like that. It just stops like that on SmackDown. It makes no it's fucking, fucking sense. Fucking terrible. So, um, what do you think about Gargano and um, Priest? I thought Priest. I thought Priest. That was probably one of his best showings. That um, ma- that was his best showing. This is also a match to where oh. it was. It was basically almost a tryout for the powers that be in the main roster. Which, God forbid, please don't fucking put him on the main roster now. Please don't. They probably will. <laughs> but you know, he's another one who's older. He's longer in the tooth. And he looks like what they want 
a star to look like. The, you know, he's yep. got the deep voice. He looks like a badass. He fucking dresses and lives the style. Yep. And when he's in the ring, he's pretty much clean. Like you know, the, the, his 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 moves and his match sets are clean. I thought for Gargano, it was a I don't know. I I, I think it went a little bit too long. I agree. Yeah. There, was, there was way too many. There was way, there was way too many. Um, um, what do they call it? They, um, near falls. They don't. Call, they don't yeah. Near way falls. Too many near, way too many near yeah. falls, in my opinion. And when you know, I I I I appreciate the 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 David versus Goliath angle and stuff, but yeah. there's certain instances to where you can't make David look stronger than Goliath. It just it it it, it doesn't work as a, Goliath needs to be the powers and David needs to fucking chip away and break down the the opponent and um and they should have and they should have taken advantage of that because of Gar- if if when David's the heel David could use different tactics to like like I don't know damage the legs or make them right. like, make them like make them stumble like like you know you know when like the old cartoons and Jack and the Beanstalk were like Jack would like tie up the Beanstalk's legs and so he would eventually tower down right like do some shit like that. Like I, 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 like fucking like aim for the Charlie horse, the motherfucker. I don't know. Yeah, Figure you know, it wear, wear it down, man. It, it's just one of those those instances to where the match was 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 really good, but um, I, it just went a little bit too long for me, just a little bit. Absolutely. Um. Um. We had um Santos Escobar defeating Isaiah Swerve Scott to regain the title, which I thought well, that was even. I thought that was a great match. I didn't think it was the best match. But I think uh, Swerve Scott really showed that he could take that belt one day soon. I said that this was, Swerve. Yeah, I, I, I said that this was going to be one of those matches that might have stolen the show. It it didn't have that feeling for it, but it was, it was uh, pretty good. Though. It was pretty good. There were certain spots. It was still there was, there was a little bl- abachi here and there, but um, this is this is an angle that I see down the line should come back again. This is a story. It, I, I, it probably still is going to be around. I don't see it going any, around anytime soon. Ah, and I, I think that Esc- I think so, uh, uh, Escobar has more in in line to deal with other talent in that in that in that roster. There's a lot more for him to do, and I wish that cruiserweight belt could be seen on every fucking show. Yeah, I wish. I wish it should it be that should be just like the the women's tag. It should be a traveling belt. I agree. I agree. The twenty four seven belt should just die, and the cruiserweight should be everywhere. Oh, honestly, God. I want to see shit. like I want to see like Santos Escobar versus Drew Gulak, which now right, you know, he, which we'll talk about now. He's he got drafted to Raw, which I think was a great pickup. Uh, you know, I, there, there's potential for this cruiserweight belt, uh, which I think we should make a cutting a promo one day on the history of the cruiserweight division right. in general. For in sure. general, in general, like uh, even from WCW days. Uh, but great match there, um, Kushida. Defeated Velveteen Dream. Of course, he dressed in as Doc Brown uh, with the yellow gloves, the hazmat gloves. Um, yeah, it fucked everybody's I, head up for a minute. They didn't know what the fuck was going on. I had on. no idea. You, you <laughs> told me, and I was like, oh, that's why. I'm like, I, I'm like you're trying to be like a homeless Frankenstein? I was like, uh, but, then I, but then I remembered Kushida is Back to the Future. It, 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 what was, what was, felt, what's the, what's the, the, the burglar's name from... Um, from Home Alone is Harry and what's the other one's name? Um, I forgot the other one's name. The, Mo, hold on. Um, the, Home Alone villains. They are Harry and Marv. 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 He looks like Marv when Marv got electrocuted in Home yep, Alone yep. 2 and the hairs Marv. were standing up and shit. That's what he looked like. The Wet Bandits. Yeah, the Wet Bandits. The Wet Bandits <laughs> strike again. <laughs> Which, if you don't watch that during Christmas, you could all fuck yourselves because you're boring. I need a. Um, I, do they? Did, I gotta look up. Do they have those Funko Pops of, a, of a Harry and Marv? Yes, they do. I got yes, they do. And the best part is, um, Harry has like the the um, the print of the fucking um, the iron on his head. On his head, and uh, his hair's electrocuted. And oh Marv has, like, God! Uh, and, and Marv has his like his head burned from the toilet. Remember the toilet? Uh, the, the, he had jumped in the toilet and shit. All right. By the they're way, good ones. They're, they're while good I while ones. I go drink some, while I go get some Sprite, uh, do a cheap pop for us since we're talking Funko Pops. Give a cheap pop for what you got going on on Instagram. Oh, thank you, man. So, um, yeah, so uh, the Funko Hub um, is uh, is booming, guys. Past one thousand followers, I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, an announcement is coming soon on a new project, but anything Funko related. We just talked NYCC on my walk this morning, and uh, I was on a rant. Uh, why did I go on a rant? Find out. Just follow the follow the page and check it out. Um, I wasn't happy about NYCC, but it's a great page to promote um, fair deals, some steals in the Funko community, as well as new releases. And uh, 
Red, you gotta send me your pop of the day, boy. And you gotta send me a little, a little camp. I don't think I want to post it by tonight or tomorrow. Oh, okay, I'll do that tonight. Yeah, I'll do it right now. Take a, take a, take a, take a picture of that um that new OG big you got. You already and, know, uh, boy, baby, baby, just, baby. Give me, just give, just give me like a few sentences about what it means to you. And that's all, and then it'll be posted. And it'll be tagged, finito. So, guys, check out the Funko Hub for all your Funko needs. Thank you. This cheap plug was brought to you by Funko Hub. All right, so uh, like I said, the match was good. I I like the edginess of Kushida in this match. This is the best version of Kushida I think we're getting. People are saying it's New Japan Kushida. But that and the fact that fucking, I don't know if it's a rib or it was done purposely, but fucking Velveteen was overselling like a motherfucker in, in that yeah, he match. Pulled, he, pulled the, he pulled the Shawn Michaels versus Hulk Hogan in SummerSlam 05, son. He was going. They must be he, telling, he, he must know he got fucking penance and he's got he's old, he's, he's old sign because shit. He, yeah, well, which, which oh god, we'll, we'll talk about who returned on Friday. Speaking of penance, but uh, I don't know, I don't know who screamed louder, fucking Velveteen Dream during that match at the end, or fucking on Rich Holland when we get to the NXT shit. But oh, damn, that breaks my heart. Uh, Amongst other things, I was broken. Shit. Yeah, yeah, seriously. But Kushida wins there. I think we're getting a side of Kushida that is needed. I think it's much, uh, it's much needed. And uh, Velveteen Dream didn't, didn't look that bad. So that was a good one what do you thought about uh what do you, th- what do you thought about Io Shirai versus um Candice LeRae because I actually thought that was one of the better women's matches we've seen in a while it was but t- to be honest with you Candice is just becoming so much blander and blander and the way she's becoming this it, it the gimmick is also reflecting in her wrestling as well yep, yep. and it kind of <laughs> yeah and it kind of takes takes away from um from the opponent so it it was a better women's match that we've seen in a while but I, I i i thought that both women really under undersold on this one and you know what and you know what i'm starting to realize my brother's a big fan of cancel ray by the way and he even admitted this i don't think i just think the problem with cancel ray is she's not a wwe kind of a kind of kind of woman she got over by by being extreme with the death matches um in the indies she was known for being um I just don't think her style matches the WWE label. Um, I think that she she'd flourish elsewhere. Honestly, I mean Johnny Gargano's doing great, but she she's missing something in this in this WWE kind of style of wrestling. I mean, it, it, it's we've seen her in 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 big matches. We've seen her where she can put it together. I don't know. Sometimes it's just the chemistry between two individuals is just uh, probably just, it's not working. Yeah, but what do you thought about the return of Tony Storm and Ember Moon at the end? Which I uh, thought it was Tessa Blanchard on that biker helmet. Uh, like first of all, everybody yeah. thought it was uh, Bo Dallas making a return to NXT. Oh, what yeah. a I thought so too. But, that uh, was. Yeah, I did too. But um, I'm going to be honest moment? with you. I'm going to be honest with you. The Tony Storm one is a pop. That's a big pop right there. I'm happy with that. Ember Moon looks weird though. The <laughs> Ember Moon thing is like, and the crowd goes mild. But I am extremely happy for one reason because her career was seriously being considered retiring. She oh, she crazy. needs it. No, no, she did. She needs it. This is gonna. This is gonna revamp. This should revamp the um. Yeah. The, the career of hers, but like that, that like, like bro, that injury was so serious that she said on Fox, she goes, "Yo, they might tell me I, I can't wrestle again." To right. see her be able to is a happy on a personal level. Yeah, it, but it, I do think she should be a heel. I don't know why she's a face. I don't know, get it that, but uh, she should be a heel. No, that's true. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the the whole thing. When she came back, she should have came back as a, as a heel. They needed to in NXT. And uh, finally, just a quick, uh, I want you you take the stage here. What do you thought about the, the main event, Finn Balor and Kylo Riley? Supposedly, Finn Balor broke his jaw twice <laughs> in two places. Well, both uh, guys got fucked up really bad. But and Kylo Riley got fucked up. It was, it was a war. And um, is it is it weird to say that this was my favorite main event in, in TakeOver you know, quite a while? This was, like I said, earlier two men went into the the, the 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 ring and actually wow put together a fight because that, shockingly that's what you want to see when you watch wrestling oh I, I think jericho forgot what that means yeah please uh, i i also i also saw the elevation of kyle o'reilly which we've already known that since his ring of honor days and in the indies he's amazing he's, he's amazing he's, he's a but great he's always been a tag team so didn't show it as much as he he should but i think this is his his spotlight and it could possibly be a moment to where that can we say that they he can break away from undisputed era i know a lot of people don't want to hear that but it could be a possibility that they might start you know teasing that civil war kind of thing I think it needs to happen, and and I think it's because of a lack of, it's a lack of stars, and 
I, I know Undisputed Era doesn't want to get called up to the main roster. I get that. But imagine Red Dragon in the tag division. Imagine Kyle O'Reilly by himself, perhaps. Imagine Roderick Strong now after he was lackluster in the beginning, not finding his place, now can honestly have a place right. in the mid card. Uh, these guys can offer uh, a diverse, uh, a variety of, of different uh, needs that the WWE needs right now. The tag division's dog shit. So imagine Red Dragon up there. I'm just saying. You get um be needed. You get you get the um at the end we have uh, Rich Holland carrying out uh Adam Cole, dumping him like a bag of shit on the ringside. Yep. Nice clothes. I was hoping that this would have started possibly a storyline to which Finn is recruiting for Balor Club. And, and uh, imagine Rich Holland joins him. That, that would have awesome. been that would have been Something interesting to happen, but well, how about a UK? How about a Finn Balor Balor uh, Balor Club UK takeover? He gets Pete Dunne in there as well. That's what yeah. I'm saying. I was hoping that it was something of that magnitude. It was that kind of uh that kind of build up. But as we will talk about in NXT this week, yeah, that might have put a fucking kibosh on that shit. Well, uh, he'll be out for more than a year, so <laughs> that's unfortunate. Yeah, uh, but. But that was takeover, and if, um, and we don't do stars here. But I guess um, you would give a, a star out of five or a thumbs up. I or... thought it was, uh, for for the, the takeovers that we haven't seen in a while, it it was far beyond what we we we've been used to. We've gotten kind of like I guess accustomed to. Eh, it's a takeover, but for this one, I actually have to put it up there with either maybe a four four point five. I'll give it a solid four. I think it was a great show. Yeah. Uh, the, women's, the, the women's match was a little. Uh, it was good, but it wasn't as no tag matches. No tag matches because everything they don't was singles. Have any. Yeah, yeah. They don't have any. Tag they don't have any. Yeah. Which is why I think they're really regretting not giving Sam Santana and Ortiz everything in their mother. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I would not be shocked if they start looking in the indies for like the, the main event and like some other like lads, some tag teams that like have a chemistry. Right. Um, but I, I thought it was a good show. So. Um, let's go over Raw. Let's go over Raw as um, this is the first, last Raw before the draft. We'll see new people on on there um, next Monday. So to start off Raw, we had Randy Orton cutting a quick promo um, talking about how uh, you know. How, what do you think about the beginning? Because uh, we'll, we'll speed. We'll be quicker with the with the review. But I definitely want your opinion on how Randy Orton um, described the night vision goggles and and I supposedly how there was footage of someone else with night vision goggles of like killing him like what the fuck was that all about each going over each prey uh, with footage of them getting beat up what do you thought yeah cause apparently he had he had a camera in his glasses yeah that, <laughs> he, had, that. He, he had fucking uh, google eyewear or some shit he was fucking taking these telephoto look i like i like listen i'm i've always bitch about the whole Opening of a show where it's fucking promos and it's fucking, you know, 15, 20 minute segments of, of nonsensical fucking banter. Uh, granted, I would love for a fucking role to start with a match. I mean, honestly, yeah, yeah, let's get a yeah. fucking match going on. Let's get some intros and get a fucking match going. Yeah. But I kind of was intrigued with the storytelling of this. Did it make sense? Not really. But it's Randy and. Sometimes when you could get Randy, that makes it that he can be palatable to be. Li- you can listen to him. It works. It, it worked for me. I, it it shouldn't have been that damn long, but I, I I got it. It was a very long explanation. Drew McIntyre comes in, they beat up, um, and they hype up their six man tag later on in the night. Uh, also on Monday Night Raw, we had uh, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke uh, and Oscar defeating Lana Natalia and Zelina Vega. Um, the only thing that to say about this, what happened here, was we got the return of Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, uh, putting Lana through a table again. Red every every week she's going through a table. I don't know. Uh, I guess Miro said some other shit. No, this is just what they do. WWE is petty as fuck, and that's what they do. Yeah, so. <laughs> Lana. Guess what? Not only are you going to take the fucking L this week, but you're going through a table again. Yep, again, and she's gonna go through a table next week. Uh, so that was a quick six man tag, a six woman tag there. Um, Drew Gulak defeated R Truth via pinfall to win the title of the 24 7. As Gulak posed as a masked janitor, what's good? Everyone dressing up as janitors. Apparently, they, as janitor apparently they have a bunch week. of jumpsuits in the back and they just tell them, you know, hey, fuck it, put the janitor shit on. Vince went to Spirit Halloween drunk yeah, he, he, and, bought, <laughs> and bought a lot of shit with his credit card. Fucking Home Depot sales and shit. Uh, so that happened. Uh, 
Uh, Braun Strowman, which I'm going to take a wild guess here that he's going to Raw. Um, because Braun Strowman comes out demanding a match because there was no Raw Underground, which, like I said, it's not because they're canceled on it. It's because of the fact that people have, everyone in that room could have COVID. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's like the White so, House lawn and shit. Yeah, like the White House. Um, but he demands a match, and Adam Pearce said it would have to be unsanctioned if they found an opponent because he's not from Raw. Thank you for the small details there. Uh, Keith Lee volunteers, and they briefly battle after being counted out. Um, they both get carried, and then Strowman, um, Lee drives Strowman into the entrance ramp with both crashing through tables. Um, is this a feud you get into? Because I could get into Keith Lee and Braun Strowman. It, Lee hasn't been on the fucking main, of, the main event roster for like two months yet, and you already got him going through fucking tables? I guess so. Oh, my God. God. I guess they want the impact of like two monsters going I wish, the big boys. I wish Lee would have gotten the fucking Ryback push. Remember when Ryback first came in and he was just fucking big, big, squashing. Big, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he was just squashing jobbers left and right every fucking week. Well, that's they, a lost story. I don't see that happening anymore. Oh my god, they should have. They could have at least done that. Whatever. Yeah, I agree. I, don't I, know. I, 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 I 100% agree. There's the, hopefully, they, hopefully we see Keith Lee get a, a, a better opportunity. I think this him and Braun Strowman could be a good project, though. Am I excited about this? No, I, I no, <laughs> I, no. Um, this is like one of those things once again that should be done in, in, in an extended period of time. This should be just feed them fucking bullshit fucking wrestlers until you can better get them into a, a, a where they should have faced off at. Would have probably been better at like Survivor Series. That's where they could first yeah. get their first yeah. stare down. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Uh, Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin, members of the Hurt Business, defeat Ricochet and Apollo Crews via submission when Lashley put Crews in the Hurt Lock. How many times are we going to see this? Uh, about nine. Uh, which, by the way, I'm so mad Ricochet is still on Raw. He was. He should have been on SmackDown. Fuck yeah, yeah. Like, uh, that was a big. That was a big fuck up, in my opinion. And. Uh, Let's just start a fucking hashtag Trade Ricochet <laughs> yeah, trade, yeah I'm about to start that Because you, They're hyping him up in the draft Like an early pick And the dude Doesn't get anything for yeah. it But okay um, Women's tag team championship matches We had Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler To be in the Riot Squad Via submission um, It was pretty one-sided What do you think about the Riot Squad uh, On Raw Because I want them together I think that I think they're meant to be together I love how they have the same gear It works It works for me yeah, they should get one more person. Gotta get, they should add somebody on there. Uh, she, um, Shotzi Blackheart. Yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be bad. Yeah. Make it work, boy. Yeah. Yeah, that's my that's my boo right there. What are you talking about? You know, Shotzi! You know, you know about that. You know my boo. Gotta give it up uh, to Shotzi! Shotzi Blackheart, motherfucker. Um, also on Raw this week, we had, um, which this, this is going to be interesting. Can't wait to talk about this one. It was Mustafa Ali versus um, who did he face? It was Mustafa Ali versus, versus MVP. MVP, mm-hmm. and it ended in a no contest due to retribution attacking. Um, if, like I said before, if you guys didn't notice, the women were not out there for a reason. They both are not in the group no more. I think they made a last minute change. Uh, retribution um, join the Storm ringside. MVP acts as Ali to help the her business fight them off. Um, Ali initially agrees to standing back to back with MVP, uh, but seconds later Ali rolls out of the ring before telling Mason T-Bar to attack. Red, it is confirmed the leader of Retribution, the hacker gimmicks back. Mustafa Ali is the captain of Retribution, and I could not be happier. Much needed. Um, I think this, this 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 paves the way for Mustafa Ali to be uh, a Seth Rollins kind of uh, character. On the show, not a, not a performer, a character. I think it's. I think it, it, it ties together the hacker gimmick they, they they dropped months ago, and I think that it gives um, them a mouthpiece and it gives them a face behind the, the gimmick. What do you think about Ali becoming the leader last minute to Retribution? No, it, it gives you it gives you the, the idea of why Seth went to fucking um to SmackDown. Which, by the way, yep. you took you got Murphy on there too. What the fuck? You could have just fucking separated them. Yeah, I know, uh, I know, but I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, Rey Mysterio heard about Rollins going to SmackDown. He said, "Nah, nah, nah, Bobby, we nah, finishing the storyline." Now you just want to take the sto- you basically taking the whole story now, putting it on SmackDown. I, you know, SpongeBob Patrick says, "Let's move this storyline and push it somewhere else." Exactly, that's and exactly that's exactly what they did. did. <laughs> that'll exactly. be the that'll be the great meme and shit with fucking uh, uh, Ray and fucking and Seth as SpongeBob and Patrick and shit. 
yeah, let's push this. Let's push this storyline somewhere else. I, it's it's I, I I don't know. I, I I'm, I'm fucking out of lust. But as for the retribution uh, yeah. reveal with Ali. I th- I thought it was fine. It makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Somebody fucking actually I dug in their creative bag and said, "Oh, wait, we didn't finish this. We still got this. Let's make this. Let's make a fuck up sandwich." But it actually actually it, makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. Did, did, does this give Mustafa Ali? Do you think he has the the wherewithal to be a leader? That's a good word. The, that, that was a good word. I like that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. College graduate, you are. Oh, I'm learning. Uh, do you think he has the mic skills and the in-ring work to come off as a as a as the leader that they think he could be? Well, his promos that he had, like his vignettes and stuff, were really good early on when he was talking about his time in Chicago and all that shit. Um, as for him being, people were going great. Put the Muslim guy as a terrorist leader, right? Eh? Uh, <laughs> oh jeez! I never, even, I didn't even think about. I swear shit. to you, I didn't put two and two together. You see, my mind doesn't even go there. I just look at the fucking. That's a good thing it doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> I was just looking at the 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 idea of them putting that together to tie all the loose ends up when it came to the hacker gimmick and all that. Yeah, uh, it made sense. Was it connects. admitted that would have they admitted to say that it was him? No, they haven't said it yet. Not but, yet, but he will next week in his promo. All right, so uh, yeah, I, I think it works, and finally you, you can you can clean the palette of um, not having the females there, make it a male orientated group. Um, yeah, because it's kind of hard to write for male and female at the same time in a group. Kind of. Yeah, it is. It is hard. Yeah. So um, no, I, I I think it works. Everybody's like, oh, this is gonna elevate them to the next. Like, no, it's not. It's it's cool. It's a cool premise. It's it's not gonna make him a superstar, like, like, like Seth Rollins, nah. but I think it, I think it adds and another layer. And it's another gimmick that doesn't need a belt. Just like just go out there and just whip people's asses, nope. and that's it. He does not need a belt. I think this is the Shield 2.0. Right. Uh, and it could work. It yeah. could work. So that was great. Uh, You're gonna get on... shit for that and saying that's the Shield 2.0. You're gonna get well, shit for that. Well, I'm just saying because like <laughs> that was the Shield in the beginning. The Shield, you know. Just destroyed people. That's yeah. what you're saying, right? They don't need a belt. Yeah, the they don't need, need a, The shield, the shield didn't need a belt in the beginning. Either. No, they just wrecked havoc. Right. Uh, so uh, throughout the night, uh, Murphy comes out and says that um, Seth Rollins must apologize to Aaliyah, his new underage girlfriend. Nah, she's not underage. She's 19, ladies and gentlemen. But pretty weird. Are um, you following her on TikTok? Yeah. I don't even know. She has a TikTok. Of course, oh, she does. She's a fucking. She's a teenage girl. Of course, she has a TikTok. She's very attractive, and she. I can say that because she's 19. But, I just um, saw her on the um, you know, when you're doing the searches for on Instagram, like I was looking for something for on the Tumblr tabloid page, and yeah. I just click and she has an Instagram, and I was like, yeah, I can't be watching this. It's kind of fucking creepy. I was like, <laughs> I did she post? Did she post anything nice? No, nah, it was just her dancing and shit. That's all it was. Uh, like, okay, yeah, yeah, kinda, so you're kinda, TikTok kinda, woman herself. But, yeah, it's like it's um, creepy. Murphy demands an apology from Rollins. Rollins. Then says um, no. Murphy goes back and forth with the kendo stick. They beat each other up. Um, but then you know they talk, they 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 go right into their tag match. It's uh it's Murphy and Rollins versus Umberto Carrillo and Dominic Mysterio, which that lasted long because now Dominic's on SmackDown and Umberto's on Raw. No. So that, that that lasted a total of two weeks. Um, Murphy and Rollins defeat Umberto and Dominic by uh, Murph, uh, Murphy um, beating Car- Carrillo. They um, should have taken him though. Umberto? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, 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 it, it would have been fine to have them like a small faction like that. Plus, maybe you get the a little storyline to where Umberto has a thing for Aaliyah. Like that, they should have taken him. One and one equals two, and they don't understand that WWE. So they think sometimes one and one is three, yeah. uh, which we can book this shit. Like I said. Two plus two is four. Two exactly. plus two is four. <laughs> After the match, um, uh, the fight continued. Um, but after Murphy went for his team, he stormed off yelling about Rollins claiming that he does not need him. Uh, after the match, though, Rollins confronted Murphy saying that he had until 10 p.m. to apologize to him. and demand He had an exact time. <laughs> yeah, he goes, by 10 o'clock on the dot, you must apologize. Um, That's funny. Aaliyah, Aaliyah, Aaliyah tells Murphy to not cave and not apologize. But uh, the second hour of the show, Murphy and Rollins were... Um, they beat the shit out of each other. It seems like Murphy and Rollins are no more, and they're drafted on the same roster. Like you said, you could have split them up after that. Apparently, that story's not over yet, sir. 
I, I guess Whatever. Not. Um, oh, I'm next. Kevin Owens calls out Bray Wyatt. Uh, Wyatt was supposed to be a guest on the Kevin Owens show, but instead he appeared on the Tron um, to the, from the, the Firefly Funhouse. Wyatt said Owens did not know what he got it into with The Fiend, but would find out on SmackDown. Uh, and then Bray Wyatt gives us a great song about friends. Oh. Did you love that song about friends? Oh, bonding moment, isn't it? Didn't you love all them singing about friends? Oh. <laughs> so, eh, it was it was pretty uh, Bray White singing reminds me of me on American Idol it's terrible <laughs> yeah that's crickets for a reason absolutely um, but Aleister Black which Aleister Black needs to get the fuck off Raw um, in my opinion he needs to go somewhere else Aleister Black attacks Kevin Owens their feud is not done by any stretch of the imagination and uh, finally on Raw we had uh we had uh, the main event, which was a six-man tag between um, – it was between Randy Orton, uh, Bobby Roode – Robert Roode, sorry, and Dolph Ziggler versus the Street Profits and Drew McIntyre. Pretty cool six-man tag, but you know how I feel about six-man tags main eventing the show. No happy Matthew. Yeah, exactly. No happy Matthew. <laughs> I hate six-man tags to end the show, and uh, it ended with uh, – how did they run this week, right? Uh, Randy RKO's um, Drew McIntyre after Drew – Hit a claymore on, I'm going to say, Rude. And yeah. uh, Randy RKO's him to basically close out the show. There you go. So, Raw Ro wasn't terrible, but uh, I think this draft will definitely screw some things up. I think Drew Gulak deserves a nice United States Championship opportunity. Yet. And it read, if I don't, okay, it's confirmed. Angel Garza is drafted to Raw. If Andrade does not go to SmackDown and they're split up, I'll be very upset. <laughs> <laughs> they better be split up. Split them up. Angel Garza is the next Eddie Guerrero, son. That's some real shit. Like, give him a singles run. He'll be fine by himself. So that was Raw on to AEW Dynamite as we started off with the FTW Championship where Brian Cage defeated Will Hobbs and Wow Red. I love this match. I was a fan of this match, too. Uh, I I think I, Will Hobbs has so much potential. I was, talking to, um, I was talking to Rich about Will Hobbs, and I said, I think Will Hobbs would have benefited if he would have probably went to NXT, or yes. because he Vince, Vince would Vince would have drooled. Well, that and the fact that he needs he needs more um, tutelage, and AEW does not have that training facility for him. Yes, that's true. He has no performance center. Yeah, I, I I think this kid is a star on the come up, and uh, for for this for for his first. Legit, like big match on on AEW. Um, to pair him up with Cage would have not been a good thing for the right. I would have put at least put him in a tag match for this one. I know it'd have been like a shitty tag match once again starting the show, but I would have had at least fucking Ricky Starks and Hobbs, you know, and like something mixed up because like, you're almost exposing that how both even fucking Brian Cage he's still fucking greenish goose shit as well. So um, wow, you think so? Yeah, Brian Cage is still green as goose shit. I think um, he's a big man and he does a lot of good shit. But the thing is, is that he's not there yet. And you still have to learn how to work with a, like, with that big man attitude. It's, I, I get it. You're athletic, but you still got to work with that big man attitude. I think he kind of lost it when he left um, Impact. I agree. Yeah. I agree. But, uh, like I said, the winner was never in doubt, but the wrestling was great. The, it was good wrestling. And, uh, I thought I think Will Hobbs is a future man. Absolutely, absolutely. Up next, we had the AEW World Tag Team Championship match. Which why the fuck is this belt defended every week? Oh Jesus! Here, 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 here. Oh God! All right. Get into this, Red, because I'm not happy, and I know what you're gonna say. Oh my! Why God. the fuck is this belt being defended every fucking week? Oh. Every fucking and it's gonna be defended next week too. Why the fuck? No, not this only that. I don't know. It's not only that. Really, it's, fucking, it's fucking. It's fucking. Jack Evans and Angelico are vets. Why the fuck do they still look like they just got out of fucking wrestling school? Yeah, yeah. And they don't have bad... any fucking idea. It's once again this whole premise of just because I could do flips and amazing shit doesn't mean you're a fucking wrestler. I remember when Jack Evans was when he was in the fucking you know, like CCW and and early on and and um in Ring of Honor and shit like that. Fucking yep. kid was cool. Now yep. it's like y'all look like old men who's happy to fucking do backflips. They're, no, they remind me of like 
they remind me of like the single the the the, the dads who like who who who, who wear who buy like the, the latest trendy clothes but they actually like <laughs> yeah, exactly but like but like though that those were a trend in the 90s right you and, know like you don't understand like, they we, should like, they should be the motor city machine guns in, in all elite yeah they should and you know they're not that and they're not that and <laughs> they're not that and it sucks and uh um, the fact that this belt, these belts are being defended every week tells me two things. FTR isn't here for the long run. They're defending these belts with every team in the damn division, and they're moving on. And that they're they're really trying to suck this tag division. And I'm like, yeah, you guys have great teams, but defending a belt every week does not make this a, 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 a legit belt to me. And um, what the fuck happened to FTR? I thought I, they did. I'm not impressed by them at all. I I really they 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 didn't they didn't elevate the division. They actually stepped down in AEW's world. They made it a little boring. Yeah, I I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of upset about that. Yeah, FTR. Uh, yeah, I'm not really I'm not really digging the tag division right now, especially with FTR um, being a little stale. Um, just it's not it's not doing it for me. I prefer the revival. In all honesty. Yeah, you left the company to go do other things, and this other things is not good. It's staler than what you were doing in WWE. And by the way, who uh, the fuck is the heel between Young Bucks and fucking FTR? Nobody. They're both heels, I think. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. Well, well, speaking of which, the Young Bucks were watching the match by standing at a weird angle to the television, of course. Which, like by the way, shout out to Tony Schiavone for coming back after getting double super kicked in the face last week. <laughs> and you would think, you would think, you would think he had, you would think he had two broken fucking places in his jaw not Finn Balor he should have had that shit and he magically comes back fine next week you yeah he's like you know what realism. yeah he's like yeah you know what and I, I I don't hold it against them they're still good guys I'm like, what these motherfuckers kicked you in the face both of them <laughs> oh my god and by the way I've I've come to the conclusion and. This is going to be put on the the allegedly fucking uh, uh, status. We're gonna put this as a disclaimer. Allegedly, I think fucking Jr. is drunk. I swear to you, I think he gets drunk before the fucking before the show. Um, it sucks that you say allegedly because I I could bet my whole entire pri- my, my my paycheck this week coming up that he's drunk when he's. I like legit him. that I believe that he's having a few cocktails before the fucking show and. I know he yeah. He yeah. He, he, ca- he calls people by not their names. Yeah, and he sounds so uninterested. It wasn't even Ricky um, Starks. He called him some other shit like Ricky Skaggs or some shit like that. I was like, what the fuck is that? Ricky Skaggs. Yeah, he called him like some shit like that. I was like, what the fuck? What is he talking about? Then it's Willie the Hobbs. Books. I know it's Bucks, Jr. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Willie, right, Willie yeah. Hobbs. Yeah, like he does not call people by their names. Um, true or false? J- Jr. needs to, to retire. I don't think Jr. really like gives a fuck. I mean, he's getting a check, and I think he's just basically phoning this shit in now. He's like, "Fuck." I it. would pref- I would prefer him being somewhere somewhere in the back to be like a producer or like whatever that is than him being on commentary right. Now. I would prefer that he actually is having a good time what he's doing because it sounds like he's he's towing the line being a company guy. When at the end, of, I can't believe that he's a guy who um, comes from that old school history of wrestling and tolerates this fucking kind of. Promotion, I, 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 it astounds me. He would fit Jim more. Jim says that. Jim yeah. says that. How dare you support that? Yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm more along the line like he would have been a better fit at like at an NWA or M, uh, MLW at least. Well, at least NWA. NWA would have been a perfect fit. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, young bucks noticed that a camera caught them doing this strange behavior. What jerking uh, off? <laughs> I guess so. They super kicked the cameraman, and of course, once again, FTR look. Throw the money, whatever, and then of course on the on the on the on the Titan Tron we get a, a picture of FTR as Glizzies. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> um, best friends come out, uh, explain the joke, explain the joke, which they did not need to do. No one cares, and announce that they have a tag title match again. The titles defended next week at Dynamite's one year anniversary. They brawl a bit as they do. Uh, and best friends are definitely gonna lose, but whatever. Ray, what do you thought about this segment? It's funny because it wasn't until um, what is it? What did I hear? Was it Cornette that I heard it? That they said he says their whole gimmick is that they're fucking kids. That they're kids. Yep. 
The yep. best friends are just basically kids. They're guys who hang out with each other and the get driven around, around by the mom. And they're 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 calling people weenies and glizzy. It's like he, they're fucking. They, he's right. These are grown men acting like fucking TikTok kids. Yep, with glizzies. Oh. I, I I I I I can't. I really can't. I can't. This is, it's it's. Uh, you know. It's gotten to a point to where, fine, I get it. WWE fucking basically buying and they bind you from being creative, or they don't give you the, the 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 leeway to flesh your stuff out, get custom to your gimmick, you know, do certain things. But there's a reason for it because then you go on this fucking show and you're doing this shit. And this is fucking high school drama club shit. This is terrible. This is terrible. Yeah. Uh, so it's not good, man. Not yeah, happy. Not yeah, happy. no. Yeah, so now, next up. Uh up next we had um the dog collar match, which you thought would main event the show, but it didn't. <laughs> Apparently <And> not. <laughs> Apparently not. We give Pitch Jericho's terrible tag match for main event, but it was Doe Collar and Cody Rhodes is your new TNT champion, um, defeating Brody Lee in. Um, I hate to admit it, this was my favorite match of the night. I, I, I Hunter was Hunter Cody Hemsley. <laughs> Hunter Cody Hemsley is back, ladies and gentlemen. Now Explain to people why you like this match. Yeah, I, I thought it was. I thought it was a great match. They took advantage of the gimmick as well as they should. I think Brody Lee shined, uh, and Cody looked good as well. They didn't make the the dog collar a stupid gimmick, rather uh, a, a weapon of destruction. Of course, they made that chain long as fuck because you know damn well they had a social distance. Uh, <laughs> they had they had they had to show some sort of social distance in there. But uh, ringside, we had Greg the Hammer Valentine looking extremely tired and high. Well, he didn't smoke, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not assuming that. I'm just saying he looked tired. Um, um, it was the first dog collar match um, in AEW history, and I will say this: um, this is the match that should be commercial free. It was absolute. I thought it was fun. I thought it was it was intense. It was bloody. The one thing I didn't like was um, one of the Dark Order members bled in the first five minutes. That was extremely unnecessary. <laughs> Based off one punch, he started bleeding. No, really? I, I um, you're right. It should have been commercial free. That's one of those that should have never went into commercial break. And um, the and the only thing I can say is I don't understand why this was a dog collar match. Like, what led to that? Or what was the purpose of it? It wasn't. Like a, uh, yeah. It wasn't. Know. It wasn't as though like um, like Brody Lee kept running away or Cody kept running away, and um, there was right. any teasing of why this needs to be two individuals that need to be close next to close by to each other. Didn't really make any sense for why that happened, but. For the match at a whole, look. How many matches can you say Cody has so far on Dynamite or an AEW in, in general that's been terrible? None, actually. None. None. He even put Mark Quinn. He even put these young bucks over, like uh, the uh, young, the young students of the game. Uh, um, I think the reason why they did the dull color match was because I think the, this isn't a good reason, but Brody Lee said in, in like a few weeks prior that. Um, he wanted him to be his pet and that like he wanted him to like he wanted to put him on a collar like his dog Pharaoh or some shit. I don't know what the fuck. Oh it was, that's it a was, what a re was, that's a reach. <laughs> that's <laughs> a fucking no reach. That was a re that was a better that was a, uh, yeah. That was a that was a bigger reach than the Yankees winning the World Series this year. Yang, um, yang, yang, yang. Yang, fuck all you. Um <laughs> but um uh, I admired the match. It's a, the gimmick was a tough one to spy its rarity. Um, a lot to live up to. Uh, I really enjoyed it. So, Cody's your new champion. What do you think about getting the belt off Brody Lee that quickly, though? I don't like it. I, I wasn't a fan of that. Um, once again, like I said, it's Hunter fucking Cody Helmsley. Uh, you made him. You made the guy a transitional champ. I think that you should have gotten more out of him in that run. And um, now you put the, the strap back back on Cody. Cody made a great fucking uh, uh, promo after the match. And, oh yeah, like a, a Rocky Four kind of promo, right? But then you know, he, it's another. I, I I appreciate that he did it because it's the open challenge um, belt. But you start the open challenge with Orange Cassidy. I was about to say that. Man. Oh my next god! Week we're getting, 
I, I was really he just like, lost. He just lost a fucking title yeah. match. I was expecting like Miro or maybe um, Scorpio Sky. You know, people who deserve it. Uh, but no, we get Orange Cassidy, and they'll, he'll be, they'll be facing off next week. Uh, I think that's the worst idea you could do. But they, they, fuck, what, what can fuck. I say? What can I say? Red Tony Khan loves him. You know what? And Tony Khan is is really showing his fucking cards as to be a really shitty fucking booker. I mean, seriously. <laughs> wow. He really is though. I swear to you. I can yeah, hit right. I can hit random on on fire on fucking on fire pro wrestling. I hit I hit random <laughs> and it'll make fucking better matches in this shit. Wow, that's a that's a that's a high cut. He's a fucking you know, honestly, he is a mark. He really is a mark. Yeah, Shout out to, let me tell you something. Shout out to fucking VXS, our boys, our, our violence is suffering. Hell yeah. Our people's back there. First, yep. young guys got this promotion. They're putting matches together. And their booking is more s- sensical than what the fuck is going on with this indie show with, with a fucking uh, 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 a a a money a money guy behind it in a, in a network. <laughs> it, it, does, it, it really doesn't make any sense. I don't, I don't. I don't... Well, I was told that Tony Khan literally makes the show the day of on the fly, but I don't know how true that is. It sounds realistic, though. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't, I, I couldn't fucking argue it. Yeah, yeah. I think Tony Khan needs to start. I think we should do a year in comparison of what Vince has Vince has done and what Tony Khan's first year. We should do a one year in the in like in the electric chair with with Tony Khan and review how he's done as a fucking poker. Man, I think he'll be electrocuted. <laughs> exactly. Pull the switch. <laughs> pull the fuck, not the plug. Pull the switch. Um, we, um, uh, after that, we get a quick interview about Kenny Omega announcing that he'll be facing um, Hangman Page in the number one contender tournament. Whatever. Uh, then we have Big Swole defeating Serena Deeb. Oh, uh, oh, oh my no. oh, God! No. Go ahead. I, I was gonna skip that, but go ahead. Why? Why are they pushing this woman? Why? Big Swole. Big Soul. Listen, I know why you hire Serena Deeb. Get it? She's older, but the woman is fucking talented. The girl could work. You could. Yes. I, 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 being a fucking indie person, if if you are a fan, you would look at that match and go, "What the fuck just happened here? Why, why, why did, why did she win?" No holds bar wants their gimmick back. Oh, oh. Somebody wants their match back. It is so. (laughs) She's terrible. She's so bad. She's wow, wow. Big swole, ladies and gentlemen. Big swole is so bad. She has declined so much since she got in AEW. It's bad, and she's in the ring with some talented motherfuckers and still can't put together a fucking match. It's bad. I gotta put. I gotta get JV Lewis from St. Louis on because he's he's the 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 women's wrestling uh, expert, and I, I I guarantee he'll agree with me. Well, we'll find out. We'll get him on next, maybe um, sooner rather than get later. him in the next Talk couple about, of weeks or so. Yeah. Talk about Big Swole. Uh, Moxley and Lance Archer do promo videos hyping up their match for next week's uh, championship match. Um, bringing up their encounter at Wrestle Kingdom back in January, but seeing how um, not that many people saw it in the states. If you aren't like if you're new to wrestling, I think it's an opportunity to see this. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Like these two promos reminded me of like Lucha Underground kind of like cinematic work. Right. I enjoyed it, so that was cool. And then finally, we had the the main event, which was Jericho and Hager defeating Luther and Serpentico in the worst way to celebrate thirty years in the business. Um, did you did you just hear what you said, Luther yep. and Serpentico in versus, the main event yep. versus Jericho and Hager? Yep, that alone is astonishing and alarming about what Jericho's mind is at right now. Because he, you know, you know, he pitched that. That shit wouldn't even be a curtain jerker at a fucking indie show in bumfuck Indiana, bro. Yeah. yeah. What the? House of, Glory, fuck? House of Glory has a better House of Glory has a better main event in their student shows. Yeah, that, that, this. I I wouldn't even book that in B O M W or some shit like it's what like the what fuck? the fuck? And and I love I love Jericho, but he needs to shut the fuck up because he cannot talk shit about anything after this terrible outing. Dude, Luther looked like he was going to die at the end of that match. Yeah, he was exhausted. Yo, he was so gas. Yo, he's fifty <laughs> something years old. I um, it, oh, my, it looked like it looked like gothic Homer Simpson fucking wanted to become a wrestler. Wow! And got into wow. the fucking ring and found out that wrestling was hard. I'm surprised we. I'm surprised when he he got hit. He didn't say dope. Exactly like dope. <laughs> 
and fucking Serpentico. I'm sorry, but he's no, a, he's as skinny as a fucking a, a sleeve of bacon, bro. Like, what the <laughs> fuck Yo, is this. that? Yo, it's, son is bad. Yo, yo, remember the remember the remember the book Flat Stanley? <laughs> <laughs> That's Serpentico, son. There is no. There's no the only reason for this was because fucking Jericho wants to put his friends on and yep yep and, and, he, it, and he wanted and he he wanted to put Luther over that's why he has a job here in the first place yo AEW laughs at the fans bro this is yeah. this is disrespectful son that that shit is disrespectful honestly you could have gave me Jericho and fucking like. Jericho and fuck and you could Jericho and um Jungle Boy would have been better because at least Jungle Boy has some I don't know potential. Which by the way, why the fuck would fucking quote unquote face wrestlers praising Jericho, especially yeah, Jungle well, Boy? Well, like, like well, 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 actually, I think Jericho turned face. He might have. I think it. I think we. I think it was an underlying face turn. Think about it. Um, um, who interrupted Jericho? It was the. It was um. MJF. MJF. I think he turned. He, I think Jericho turned face. You might, you might, it might be leading to something there. You might be Cause right. Because think, think, think about it. What heel gets mocked with a clown and all that bullshit? Yo, I swear, I, I, I could imagine after people have talked shit about The Rock and 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 and, and this Mick Foley's life. "This Is Your Life," you basically did the, the almost the same shit. I think the what is worse? Yeah, <laughs> this was, dude. Then they ran credits. Yeah, and everyone, every name was Chris Jericho. What the fuck is this? Saturday Night Live? Like, what no, the fuck? No, it's the Muppet Show. Exactly. What the fuck is this? This is Muppets Now on TNT. Yo, di- yo, what have I been saying for the longest about this show? This show is stoner shit. I'm telling yeah. you. This is stoner shit. They want you to be smacked while watching. No, fuck this. Tony Condon is in the back getting lit on some motherfucking hydroponics from Denver or wherever the fuck it is they're getting it from. And they're like, dude, yo, check this out, man. Yo, (laughs) after I hit him over the head with the fucking, the the painting, right? (laughs) We can roll the credits, and all the credits has Jericho's name on it. <laughs> I feel like um Ching and Ch- 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 Chong. Uh, the Chicha Chong shit. Chicha Chong pitched this shit. Like I feel like Tony Khan goes, "All right, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold this 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 inhale. If I in, if I can hold it for ten seconds, Jericho is on all the credits." I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. And and people would sit there and look. I, maybe I'm out of touch. Maybe I'm just older. No, no, no. Maybe. It was bad this week. It's no, but it's been mad. It's been rolling like this for the longest. I, I'm swearing. I know. I think it's starting to get worse. That no jerk credit shit. I don't think I, I've never ever reached that bad. No, uh, and then, and I'm telling you, and they wave goodbye like it was fucking Saturday Night Live. I'm like, yeah, what no, I'm the, the fuck is show. this? I was like, All what the fuck? I can't. I'm sorry, it's JR, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> JR's the sweetest chef. And you and me are the old men in the fucking balcony, Opal Dorf and Schmielorf. Oh my god. Waka waka waka. I, I don't I don't I don't get it. They waved this. like yo, you know, like you said, it's the other Saturday Night Live with the trumpets in their Christmas. Bam, yeah. Like, everybody. Thank you. I wanna thank everybody for coming out. Uh, one of our special guests, Luther, yeah. and all the people who gave me love on cameo. I'm like, what and the doing, fuck like, the is this? Shit, like, Thank you, thank you. No, I'm. I seriously, I seriously believe that. I I can't, I can't phantom fucking wrestling fans, real, real pure wrestling fans, watching this shit and going, "This is fucking great, man. This, this is awesome, dude." I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I can't, I can't. I think AW needs an attitude error. They need to be take themselves more. Seriously. Somebody needs to hit the serious. fucking reset button. Somebody needs to fucking get real bookers in there. Get like a Kevin Sullivan in there. Get, they need uh, an attitude adjustment. No pun intended. Yeah, no, seriously, they need some. Get they need like a deranged, a deranged type somebody. Fucking Marty, yeah. Sk- even Marty Skrull. This fucking Ring of Honor, uh, pure shit is awesome. Fun. So much yeah, fun. It's 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 exceeding. Even that job. even that Heritage Cup shit on fucking um WWE UK is actually fun. Yeah, yeah this it shit is. Deep is, is awesome. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what the fuck this shit is. But anyway, next up. Uh, all right, next up we had NXT, which uh, I I could I could be completely honest with you guys. I watched it, but I do not remember the order of what happened. Do you uh, remember the first one that happened. For the first match finally was not a fucking woman's match. 
Wow, wow. It wow. was um, Champa versus... Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Champa versus Kushida, um, which I love the story. Previous to the night, they, they, they fight in the gym. They got to be broken up. And Champa runs out there like he's about to fuck some dude up. Uh, did you enjoy this match? I did, but it was way too fucking long. Again, way I think, too... I think NXT's openers are always way too long. Champa should not be in a fucking match with Kushida for 20 fucking minutes. Honestly, this is not... Maybe maybe at a takeover, but not at the fucking beginning of a show. Yeah, no, absolutely not. I agree. Um, uh, um, the, the match um, was a, it seemed like a gimme match for Champa, actually, but um, now that um, Kushida's getting this, um, uh, this new attitude, it seems like... Uh, the psycho killer, which is Champa, is facing uh, the Japanese killer, uh, whatever the fuck you want to call him. The new angry Kushida. Uh, I thought it was a great match. Um, they mixed up well. Um, the hoverboard lock was in tight. Uh, NXT has found that they were looking for when they signed Kushida, I think. And, uh, and Champa's killing it. So uh, Champa won, um, I think, right? Champa wins, and uh, Velveteen comes out to attack Kushida, and then. Again, Koshida beats the shit out of him. <laughs> Every week it happens. This is his punishment. Exactly. I tell you, he's going through his penance. I'm telling you. This is his, um, yes, yeah, that's, that's the shit that he has to go through. Um, um, Austin Theory has a match with Leon Ruff, which was quick and um, quick and easy. Took care of him quick. Leon Ruff is another one. I'm like, yo, Leon Ruff and fucking Serpentico should be in a fucking. They should. Last Stanley too. They should fuse like in Dragon Ball. They should do a fuse and become yeah, and, one. You know, and, and, and yeah, when the, and the fusion when when Goku and Vegeta get it wrong the first forty five times. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. After that match, Austin Theory comes out saying that he wants better competition, and we get the return of Dexter Loomis. Your 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 psycho is back for Halloween Havoc. Dexter Loomis. Um. They get a match. They they have a match, but then um, Cameron Grimes attacks Loomis, and uh, and the um, in a, uh, after the match, uh, Dexter didn't talk to Grimes backstage last week instead of just giving him the icy stare. So that's why they beat each other up. But don't they uh, have heat from before? Like didn't they have like uh, an angle from early on? Like, they like, did. They before, did. Before they got Loomis hurt, got... so I guess yeah. they just pick up back where they left off. Right. Um, if, Dex- if Dexter Loomis does not have a match at Takeover Halloween Havoc, they're really fucking that up because he's the definition of Halloween. Uh, I thought Theory uh, was another was another great match by Theory. Him and him and Dexter could go, uh, but unfortunately, we get some bad news here. As Rich Holland, uh, Hot Night ended in a in a, in a disaster. Uh, we had Danny Birch versus uh, Rich Holland, and uh, Rich Holland destroyed him. Only Lorkin comes out to. Um, uh, to save him, but uh, in an unfortunate turn of events, um, Lorkin hit the big man with a splash over the top rope, and um, Ridge's leg has given up. He ended up getting stretched out. Very unfortunate. It seems like he'll be out for a year. Dude, that, that man fucking screamed, son. Yeah, well, he, he screamed like you he's heard out for that. A year. He's out for a year. You now. heard when he fucking broke that shit. He fucking screamed. You heard it. And mind you, I would love to to see um, Ben the Brit say some shit because you know he's a tough ass. He's a tough ass rugby player. Now, fuck yeah, yeah, that. I love him. I Every love fucking him. everybody screams like a bitch when they break some shit, boy. Hell what? yeah, hell yeah. When I broke my ankle, I was done though. But you know what? Uh, it was pointless. Once again, it's stupid. He did that dive. That was the second dive he did. Yeah. Yeah, I guess yeah. the second dive was supposed to be that uh, Holland was supposed to catch him and then beat the shit out of him with it, but he couldn't. He lost his footing, and like I said, again with these fucking dives, man, it's crazy. I don't, I don't know. I, like I said, it was pointless. I thought it was really, really unnecessary. Absolutely. So unfortunately, we get that. We get we get that. It sucks. Um, but it's, it's it's unfortunate. A year, a year. But I hope he gets get gets well sooner. He was about to get. A rocket ship on his ass. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gargano and Candice LeRae return from walking their dog, uh, and they find a new TV gifted to them by Indy Hartwell. This is some AW shit right here. Indy includes a video that highlights how much she helped Candice in the Battle Royal, looking to team up with the Garganos. It seems. Are you enjoying? Uh, do you think that's an interesting story? I thought I don't. I I'm I'm I am I, I pass that. I just be skipping that shit sometimes. Uh. Um, we get Chelsea Blackheart defeating Zia Lee, but then after the loss, Boa, which was, um, I think China's, um, biggest recruit for NXT, walks out and hands her an envelope. It looks like we'll be getting, I hate to sound stereotypical here, a karate kid type aspect here, uh, like a, 
I, I got Mr. Miyagi to his um his his train. I don't know what that's gonna be, but I'm interested. I'm mm-hmm. interested. I wasn't. I, mean, I I I am indeed interested in that. Um, we had Drake Maverick and Killian Dane, the new team Hell No, facing Ever Rise, which I. I'll say this again, and I'll say this for a million times over. I don't get Ever Rise. I think they look terrible. Um, the te- the member with the ponytail looks like he works at Hot Topic and uh, <laughs> TJ Maxx. Um, I don't get them at all. Their gimmick screams. You know where they belong? They belong at NWA. <laughs> yeah, they, it's like they yeah. have that. They have that old school like where the rockers. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Kind of bullshit. Like they just don't work for me. And you know their tech team division sucks when they're promoting them on TV every week. What do you think about the Killian Dane and Drake Maverick pairing after the music of the music of Drake Maverick snapping and dancing, the light, the the, the whistling? I, I did, once again, I don't, I don't like you said. This is AEW shit. Like I, I, I don't. They are trying to do a new team. Hell no. You know, I, I do, guess. I guess, but they're it, throwing they're throwing two contracts. They spent a lot, a lot of money on and said, well, we gotta do something. We gotta do something with him. Yeah, you're right. And the tag division needs a new tag team, right? So I can't be mad at that, but I, I fast, I, I did fast forward it. fucking four months from now and they're the new tag champs guaranteed. Um, I just find it funny how Jake Mary came up with the music and the fucking dancing and he was like, nah, fuck that. The music was hilarious. Um, also on NXT this week to, to close it out, we had uh, a woman's tag team match. We had Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez against Rhea Ripley and Ember Moon after they came out earlier in the night. Ember Moon picks up the win for the team, and it seems like we'll be getting um, a lot of championship matches uh, as um, Ember Moon and Rhea Ripley go for that belt. Seems like um, she's going to co- stick with that finisher, huh? I guess, unfortunately, um, <laughs> it looked it looked smoother, but I still am not a fan of I'm not a fan of top rope finishers because I, you have to be in a you have yeah to, to be, be in a certain spot yeah in a certain spot to always make that it looks work. it like, looks set up like I don't like yeah I yes. don't like when it's set up like that. Yes, and I, and once she goes up, like I can already be like, all right, she's she this is hitting yeah. Um, before we go to SmackDown, just give me a quick synopsis. What do you think about the the, the state of the AEW Women's Division? Not AEW, I mean NXT Women's Division. People saying it's it's still good. I think it's mm, getting a little weak. Well, if, me if Mercedes is going down there, it helps. Yes, it does. Um, I don't think it's as weak as it was not too you know not too long ago. Tony Storm is coming back, which is needed. They need they they need that look there. Shit, I would bring all the NXT UK women over there. They like shit. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, right. Uh, Piper Nevin and all them shit. But yeah, no. Yeah. But, but you get Tony there. Um, like I said, you get Mercedes going back. It it actually revamps it a little bit more. Uh, I just think that there should be a um, better way of. But listen, even this good Dakota guy is good. Like she's not she bad. Good. She is, she she's good. good. And that and um and um I just think, I, Raquel I, I think Gonzalez she, I, I, is showing that she's good as well. Um, um, Gonzalez. Yes, she is good. She's but, good but as I, well. But, 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 but I'll be honest with you, but I think I think Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez have stayed overstayed their welcome in NXT. I think they they should go some. I think they should go up. I don't see them. I don't see them. I don't see her winning the belt in NXT. Man. Mm. I don't. I just don't. I don't see it. I, I would rather. I'd rather see her being in a in a few with maybe like uh, an Oscar or something like that. Like, right. uh, you know, there's potential there. Um, on a SmackDown, guys, I will not be doing the draft updates here because I'll do the, the official draft order after I go over SmackDown. So don't ask. I'm doing that right after this. Um, and possibly, you're going to be shocked by this. The match of the week, Big E defeats Sheamus. And I thought it was an over-the-top, outstanding match. What do you thought about this? Because I was hyped as fuck. They had blood. Crazy. They had fucking carnage. Uh, I thought it was great, and that finish was phenomenal. The big ending onto the off the car, off the car. I it's, see, and it's this is a heated fucking rivalry that needs to be closed out this way, and it makes sense. So yeah, uh, you know, sometimes it's like you, you 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 figure that they throw matches together just to throw matches together and be like, all right, make magic happen, sirs. No, but this is a, an, a heated exchange between two men who've been going at it for the past couple of weeks. So yes, this Absolutely. needed this needed to be tied up this way. Absolutely. I think it was a great finish. I do think Sheamus is going to Raw. Um, um, and I think that's why they closed this off with a bang. Sheamus, Sheamus should go to Raw and should have a immediate interaction with, with Drew McIntyre. McIntyre. Yep. Immediate. Like the week, this Monday. Immediate. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> like this Monday. Yeah. Um, once once the show starts, just kick, just fucking bro kick him. Just go yeah, bro exactly. Him. And just fucking call it. As um, soon as like, we're here live at Raw, bro kick. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> 
Um, so Biggie wins there. Great, great opener to SmackDown. We had the return of the New Day. Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston are cleared to compete and are ready for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, and they win them on the first fucking night. He saw Xavier Woods as swole, boy. See my man, Xavier Woods? Yep. That's playing yep. on that. Xavier, that's swole, playing on that. And, and, and um, this is the only one I'll do because this actually has to do with the night. Um, the New Day win and now your new SmackDown Tag Champs, but they are announced that Kofi and Xavier Woods are drafted to Monday Night Raw, and Big E stays on SmackDown. This might have been the best career move for Big E, hands down. That, what do you think? Well, that and the fact that they're not going to have the SmackDown titles for too long because they have a match next week against uh, Shinsuke and Cesaro, so it's a rematch, so they might not have it for too long. Oh, is it a rematch? Yeah, it is a rematch next week. Because so. what, what I was thinking they were going to do was move the Street Profits to SmackDown and move and do the switch. And because they're their own belt, they would announce the new belts what, and give us. What's, and, but it's, it's funny because, um, what you call it? Now you have New Day and Street Profits in the same thing? Yeah, but like I said, they Street Profits are in the Raw pool. So I think they're going to go to SmackDown on Monday. Mm, mm. They might do the switch. My prediction is they're going to do the flip-flop. And because the belts are red and blue, they're going to go back to black straps and make them look a little bit classier. Because uh, just supposedly there are new belts that have been already completed and they're ready to go, but they want to do it in front of a crowd. Oh, okay. But I think, I think they finally said, fuck it, and said, you know what, switch them and announce the new belts next week. Oh, okay. A man could dream. A man could dream. Um, up next on SmackDown, we have Roman Reigns revealing his Hell in a Cell stipulation was an, is an I Quit match. And uh, what, so. what do you thought about the promo of Roman and Uso to this week? I'm telling you, fiery, fiery, fiery. I'm, he he doesn't have to, the the way that they're pacing him. The way that Heyman has him paced is the perfect right. way to execute Roman. Yes, yes. Don't cool, calm and collected, and don't give him too much shit to fucking memorize. Talk from the heart. Talk yep. about talk about what it is that you know that you could quickly reference, and yep. just slow pace it and get it going. And that's exactly what they that that's that's best for Roman right now. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think it's a great story, family bloodline. We all know the ending is going to be Roman Reigns versus The Rock. And I, I, prolonging this story, I, I'm not mad at it. We also got uh, this week, we had Matt Riddle and Jeff, Jeff Hardy saying that uh, the story there was Matt Riddle requested that if either got drafted, he wanted to have one more chance to, to team with Jeff Hardy as they called themselves Broetry in, in Motion. <laughs> Broetry oh, in Motion. Um, of course, Matt Riddle gets the pin here against Miz and Morrison, and um, we get the return of Lars Sullivan, ladies and gentlemen. The man himself, Lars Sullivan from Pornhub, is back onto WWE scene with a new beard, um, and he destroys all men in the ring. Red, um, before you give your opinion on this, Triple H liked a picture on Twitter. It's confirmed. This is not no bullshit. He, his personal account, he liked a picture of someone say of someone posting, guess who's back? And it's a picture of him on the gay, in the gay <laughs> porn video. And Triple H liked it. Confirmed. What do you think about Lars Sullivan returning? Does he make an impact? Do you, do you think that he should, uh, I, to, to be honest with you, I forgot what he did that was so bad besides just being gay porn. I don't think they could be mad at someone for that. Uh, what do you think about the whole Lars Sullivan situation? I don't care. I really don't. I don't. I, I, we, I can do without him. Yeah, but I guess they really Vince really loves his big men. Yeah, Vince McMahon loves big sweaty men. I, I I don't like. I'm not. No, I don't care. I, I, yeah, I don't care for him either. He's gonna no go sense. in there. He's still he's still gonna be green as goose shit. He's still yep. gonna fucking be greener than a, 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 a head of foxy lettuce. It's 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 <laughs> terrible. It's gonna be bad. It is gonna be bad. Um, next week it's the SmackDown Women's Championship. As as expected, it was a disqualification. Sasha Banks wins uh, via disqualification. Um, they, they announced that their next match will be at Hell in a Cell. I'm not happy with this. This should have been waited until WrestleMania, but fuck me, I guess. Um, nothing special with the match. It just be a quick DQ with the chair and uh, just to prolong it for the Hell in a Cell. And finally, we had the Fiend um, Bray Wyatt defeating Kevin Owens in quick fashion with the mandible claw. Um, at the end, be at the Fiend and Alexa Bliss staring at each other. Sister Abigail once again showing that 
Alexa Bliss no more. We're getting this beautiful, amazing couple, Phantom of the Opera esque, uh, to close out the night. What do you thought about the main event? Um, it was a solid way to tighten you know, to tighten up the rest of the show. I think what overshadowed basically the main event was the draft. I think everybody was more focused on the, the draft, if anything. But and uh, speaking of the draft, let's go right through it. Let's 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 go over who. Um, who went where the first night? And uh, Red, I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna say the names, and I want to give you a sent. Give me a sentence or a quick reaction to who goes where. I got it. Mm-hmm. First pick, we got Drew McIntyre going to Raw, staying there for WWE Champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't. We don't have to. I'm just gonna skim through the champions. <laughs> of, course, of course, Asuka. Um, uh, Asuka goes to Raw, stays on as Women's Champion. I just Smackdown don't understand why would you put them in the pool if they're champions. Why did you put him in the pool? Yeah, I don't understand that. It didn't yeah. make any sense. Uh, it didn't make any sense. Uh, so Drew McIntyre stays on Raw. Roman Reigns stays on Raw. Oscar stays on Raw. And the first thing that person that switched hands this night was Seth Rollins to SmackDown. Thoughts? That was a that was big. I like. I I'm a fan of that. I think that's um a, a nice move. He needs to shake up. He needs to be on a Friday night. That's good. Uh, the Hurt Business stays on Raw, which I think was smart. I think Raw, they just scream Raw and Raw Underground, so I'm happy they stayed. Uh, another switch of hands. AJ Styles goes to Raw. I wonder why. That was mm. done on purpose. Not because of the Paul Heyman thing. I think they actually gave him some love because he wants to watch his kid on Fridays play football. So. Oh, okay. That's yeah, I, I think that's I think that's why they did it. Okay, and uh, Sasha Banks stays on SmackDown. Naomi goes to Raw. Thoughts? Um... Do you think it adds some depth to the women's roster and all of that? It does. It's needed. It's fucking atrocious over there. But well, unfortunately, unfortunately, Naomi goes there, but Bianca Belair leaves and goes to SmackDown. I think her and Lacey Evans have a pretty good feud. Yeah, and I, I think that'll make that um once that all clears up with the Sasha and the the Bailey thing, she can make it a little saucy over there. So um, sure, that works. Also, I just think that Naomi and, and um her husband are just separated now, and it's like ooh. Oh, are they? Yikers. Yeah, they're separated now. Yang, yang, yang. Um, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler stay on Raw. Ricochet, in unfortunate circumstances, stays on Raw, which I don't know why. Um, Jay Uso stays on SmackDown. Mandy Rose stays on Raw. SmackDown gets Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio with Rollins. So we talked about that before, but um, I like Dominic and Rey on SmackDown, though. They, they, that, 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 that's Rey's home. The storyline continues. Uh, and Raw and Raw gets the Miz and Morrison. What do you thought about that? Oh, that was a shocker for me. I was like, I figured that they were a fixture on um, SmackDown, but then once again, it pulls away from the older, the older, the oldest storyline, does it? Yeah, or does uh, or do they yes. or do they find a way to take the fucking the money in the bank away from him before they leave? I hope they do that because I don't want Otis's cash money in the bank. I really don't. Um, after that, we have the New Day um, going to Raw, and like we said, Big E to SmackDown alone. The New Day is officially split up, uh, which I, I'm happy. It was definitely needed. Dana Brooke goes to Raw, and Otis stays on SmackDown. Angel Garza goes to Raw, and um, Uberto Carrillo stays on Raw, and Murphy goes to SmackDown. Thoughts on Murphy and the SmackDown? Once again, it's just, just bringing the story from like, one no, place that, to that, else. And they're just breaking up fucking tag teams, aren't they? Heavy machinery's broken up? Tucker's yes, done, though, boy. Yes, they are. Tucker is Tuck- done. Yeah, Tucker Tucker is the next Eugene. Mark yeah, my words. He is done, though. It's over for him. That's um, fucked up. That's I know, fucked up. I know. They they, they they pulled some shit that a fire party split up. Isaiah Cassidy be fucked. Yeah, um, exactly. One of, the, one of the better picks um, was Drew Gulak going to Raw. I know you're happy about that. Yes. Uh, Kalisto stays on SmackDown, and uh, t- and I think the rest of the Lucha House Party are going to be split. Are uh, going to Raw? Well, they're they're free. No, they're free agents. Oh, oh, free agents. Copy. Yeah. So and, have- and Tucker and Tucker went to Raw. Um, that's it so far. Um, what do you thought about the first night of draft? Uh, I, I thought it was cool. I, um, I thought they was going to do like the whole war room shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of missed that. I wanted to see the whole war room kind of thing. The robot. Like I said, I just didn't find I didn't I don't understand why you put the champions in the pool. Like I didn't understand that. I don't get that either. But that was the first night, and that was all I watched in wrestling this week. Red, are we gonna go with MVPs? Sure. MVPs for me this week, I have to give it to two guys. Gotta give it to Cody and Brody Lee for their door collar match this week. Wow, wow, wow. It was a great match. And uh my MVP this week will go to Biggie. I think his showing in the match against Sheamus was phenomenal. I think him being drafted alone is a sight for 
a, a sight for sore eyes. I think it's an amazing look um, for him in his future. So I'm going to go Big E. Yeah, it was a close second for me because uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Finn Balor could have took it, but uh, I think with the theatrics and the drama that happened during that dog collar match, it was worth it. Absolutely. All right, guys, that, that pretty much wraps up around the square circle. So, guys, uh, thank you for listening to Turbuckle Tabloid, and please do your best. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Wash your face. And, and your ass. And your ass. And um, as always, take a bump. See you guys in later. Later. Turnbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. Buckle tabloid.